What's up? We're we're doing a high energy start to this one. This is this is how it starts, guys. Twenty five. Yeah. This is episode twenty five. Not so subtle. The best podcast on the internet, or that you've ever or never heard. Doesn't matter because you're listening now. I'm Dan Lapointe. Who are you? I'm Jordan Miller. And I'm Coulter Potter. Welcome, boys. Thanks. How's everyone doing? Great. I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So I did uh, commit the cardinal sin of speaking before being introduced on a podcast, which is that's a true. All that's podcasts true. are assumed as one man until anyone else speaks up. It's true. Is that that's the written? Is that the word first of, commandment of yes. podcasting? <laughs> I didn't know this. It's the word of podcast God. Guys, we've gathered here today to talk about one thing and one thing only: ranch. <laughs> Is it, is it a dressing or a sauce? That's that's <laughs> the age-old question. <laughs> There's only one answer, and it's dressing, and I'm not going to have any more of it. Can, Coulter? it. can it be a salad sauce? That's uh, not a real thing. I mean, no. It's just... It's... I tried to compromise. Let it be known. <laughs> you did. You, isn't a real thing. You though. extended the olive branch, and it was it was quickly... <laughs> it was a quickly burn. It was sliced by a sword. <laughs> and it was dunked in dressing. Sauce. I prefer it as a sauce, but it is also a dressing. You were supposed to be the one to yeah. dip it in the sauce, not like, use it as a dressing. You can make an argument that it's both, or it's just dressing. You can't say it's not dressing. You, you can, you, okay, you can't say it's not dressing, but you can say that it is dressing and can be used as a sauce. Yeah. Is that your opinion? I would say, well, no. I'm saying that, I'm saying that it's <laughs> okay. dressing and a sauce. <laughs> but yeah. if you wanted to say, I would be okay with you conceding that it can be used as a sauce <laughs> i'm gonna say it's dressing and some people mistakenly use it as a sauce mistakenly <laughs> i won't get on board with that that's I'll, that's passive aggressive towards to me in I'll my in disagree. my sauce uses well let's also ask do you enjoy dipping stuff or do you like the taste of when you dip stuff into it such as fries it's you did it fine, today but it, it's not my preferred dip i wouldn't is it on the top five absolutely you just it not dip. what's the top five uh barbecue in order, sauce in order barbecue sauce number one yeah. Okay. Uh, might just go with ketchup. That, that says that's a boring one, but all right. I mean, number are you, three. Are you gonna tell me? Ketchup no, number three. Good? Come on. Tell me. Number my, Jordan. Is, number three. I'm waiting. Uh, man, another <laughs> dip. Um, what? Come on, honey mustard. I'm not po- a big fan of honey know, mustard. I uh, go with regular sriracha. Sriracha is not a dip. That's a sauce. No, I don't know about that. You can't. Sriracha ketchup. Sriracha ketchup. Okay, but that's ketchup with hot sauce. Am I right? The, the word is... Are we just, supposed to say that you can't dip stuff into a sauce? No, but it's not a dip. It's 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 sauce. It's hot sauce. You don't but dip it into But what constitutes... Sriracha. No, I don't like that. You don't dip something into sriracha. You That's usually pour sriracha Just like something. time, sauce is a human construct. Yes. That's right. So, I, I mean, okay. I can call a sauce whatever I want. I can call it a chair. Okay. Now we're getting uh, crazy nowhere. with it. We now are. we're getting nowhere. All right. Well, you didn't finish Barbecue, your top five, ketchup, so you don't have any... Mustard, uh, Dijon mustard, brown mustard. <laughs> you can't do that. Dijon mustard and brown mustard, basically the same. And then deli mustard. <laughs> and, deli. <laughs> and gray poupon. All right, guys. I'm oh. uh, guys. Uh, I'm cutting this off. I'm cutting off the ranch. All right. Okay. We have a few things to talk about. The first thing is a lightning round brought to us by Colton P. Potter. Colton. Oh, I was about to say Colton. <laughs> wow. Um, cue, cue the lightning round. So noise. before we get to that, we're also going to be talking about movies uh we have a little a little treat plan for you today We're talking about the year in movies that year being 2017 not 18 the 18, year of our Lord, 18 just started so we're going to talk about our top 10 movies i got 10 okay 10 barely i had nine but i put one on there uh just ran yeah i would say arbitrarily i'm gonna say right now number 10 is just a, a non-factor in it it could just might as well be nine number cause. 10 is a movie that i thought of uh, later, and then I'm like, well, I don't think this really beats any of the other movies that I liked, but it's, so it's not, like, if it's on the top ten, it's, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's yeah. not like ten is, like, the worst. It's just not the I mean, greatest of those ten. I feel fine saying it's the tenth best movie I saw last year, but it's only on there because I need a tenth movie, and I can't make a top nine list, so. I had, I initially... It, Guys, we can talk about this when we get there. That's true. We will uh, never get there. We'll never, we'll never get there. Uh, and then, uh, we're also gonna be talking about Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragoon, which we just watched, uh, for the first time, all of us. 
And then, uh, you know, who who knows where we'll go from there. But first, Colton, the lightning <laughs> round. Hello, Dan. You know. <laughs> Dan, what's what's good, Dan? You know what? I'm just waiting for those questions, and I'm excited. I'm excited, and I'm glad to be participating in this activity because it's a great activity. The I'm lightning. I'm nervous. Are you? Are you excited, though? Yeah, it's nervous excitement. The, uh, uh, the song for the lightning round goes as follows. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is hot. <laughs> Can that you replicate that? that in, in like, yes, I'll okay. try again w- if we do this again. All right. That was pretty hot. Should I do that between each question? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> you just answered your own question. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure about this first question. <laughs> By the way, this is from elfster.com uh, entitled A Lightning Question Office Party Icebreaker Game. That will have yeah. your coworkers <laughs> shooting from the hip. Why is every word capitalized? What someone, is this, Jane Smith? S- someone smelled toast while they were, while they were writing that. <laughs> that title is the worst title it's ever created. Such a created. bad title. <laughs> first, first question: Is that a good title? <laughs> no. I just saw cake or pie, and I'm pretty sure cake or pie was on the previous one. It was. Wow, that's embarrassing. Cake. All pie. right, pie. Know. It was pie. Wow, you said cake. Um, okay. First question: Virtue or sin? Oh, virtue. I'm gonna say virtue. Sin. Yeah, of course you say sin, you fucking evil maggot. <laughs> <laughs> maggot, 20, 256 players. <laughs> won't. Groundbreaking action game. It's the most inventive game of our time. <laughs> I Mag. won't deny that sin <laughs> is something we all do, but virtue is better for everyone, so. I feel like a lot of our lives is taken up by sin, yeah. but sin is also a construct of religion. Of man. Kind. Is yeah. it, though? I mean, I guess I the literal definition We're, of it is. But sin itself is just actions that you partake in yeah. that don't necessarily help your life. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, I guess it's framed in a religious perspective. It doesn't Listen, I don't intend to be the religious master here. <laughs> okay, let's so. go deeper. All right. Next question is going to go real deep, even deeper than that. Sourdough or wheat? Oh, wheat. sourdough easily. Wheat. There's no question. Um, I mean sourdough, probably. It depends Look, on what the situation is. I would, I would have just a little old sando with wheat bread, like yeah. that's kind of nice. But that is nice, for but the most part, but sourdough, yeah. I feel like is better. It has more, uh, you know, applications. It has more situations where it could be, like you could use it, like you know, with spaghetti. You could use it for like garlic bread. Yeah, it's good you could for, use it for any a sandwich Italian situation. Yeah, you could toast it and just have butter on it. You can do peanut that butter, with wheat. peanut butter and jelly. No, no, I think it tastes better with all with all. I don't those know situations. if I prefer sourdough as sandwich bread. I would probably. Guys, I, take I have a time sensitive bread. joke here. My favorite yeah. movie is The Italian Situation, because I said The Italian Situation. All right, cue the laugh track. Thanks. I really do appreciate that you that you tried. Gotta give it to you. I it think been, it would have been great if you guys didn't ramble. Yeah, on. the time ran out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it that. did run out. All right, go ahead. Wheat. Sourdough. That's all I had left. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sourdough is better just by itself. And um, sourdough is also better toasted, which mm. I prefer most of my bread to be. Mm. Nom, nom, but the. <laughs> right. nom, nom, Would you rather <laughs> cuddle with a baby panda or a baby penguin? Oh, baby mm-hmm. panda. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to have to go with panda because I don't know if penguins... They're cuddly. A they pengu have or a pando? Yeah, but <laughs> penguins have, like, beaks, too, so... Sure. That's gonna be the title of this episode, Pingu or Pando. <laughs> Although, hey, pe- I'm Pande. Penguins do, oh, as a... Hi, guys, my name's Pande. As a fun mating ritual, they'll grab a pebble and give it to another uh, penguin as a sign of their love. Yeah, you saw that from Happy Feet. I've never seen that movie. Do Don't I look that. like... Do you Don't hate say that, me as the person who has watched Happy Feet? Look, it was directed by George Miller. Wow. Wow, he that's kn- the he knows how to direct an exciting film. joke. What? Are you trying to make... Is that like a, a, a name reference for me? Or are you just saying... George Miller directed George Mad Miller? Max. Okay. He's not making a joke about Jordan okay. Miller. I thought he was assuming like, oh, it's Miller. Oh, no. Have, seen it. have we called you George movie. Miller before? Mm, Do we call no. him George? We've definitely called you George. Someone before. has. With a J. It didn't take. Dude, oh, yeah. That's just Jorge. That doesn't no, literally that's, can't that's work. George. No. <laughs> that's George. <laughs> that's George. <laughs> All right. I would go Panda. Yeah. Ben, oh, is it a ben, red panda ben, or is ben. it like a you know typical panda? Is it Master Shifu? For all my Kung Fu Panda fans out there, <laughs> is Master Shifu that. the panda? Yes, I found that out. Because I thought it was a bird at first, but yeah. it turns out crane. Oh, is, crane is called. It's yeah, just no, crane. No. All right. Um, this one's weird. Are lifeguards attractive? 
No. <laughs> Depends on if they're attractive. <laughs> That's literally just the worst question. No, I think it's because lifeguards are, are typically, like, the stereotypical they have a job lifeguard is, like, a sexy, like, like hunk or, like, you know, a babe sure. who's like, oh, I need to, like, do my job now. Get all sneaky old CPR there. It seems that they're rarely mouth doing their mouth. job. Like, the everyone's seen Sandlot. Yeah. Where they where there's the hot lifeguard I mean, and he pretends to drown just so he can kiss her. Everyone knows how to swim, classic. so like they just don't have a job. Like if you're a lifeguard, like a little pool, like a like community pool, you're just sitting there, you know. How many times do you need to save someone? They all know how to swim. Do they though? Most of them do, unless you're a goof and you just jump in the deep. You're, unless you're a swim. goofer, you have no regard for your. I wouldn't life. want to be a lifeguard. That's too much pressure. I mean, if you know how to swim, you just pick them up. Like they don't weigh much in the water, you know. I don't like it. It's stress. It gives me anxiety. I don't like swimming. I don't either. I'm afraid of open water. On the question, though, I will say lifeguard. That job is inherently uh, attractive. Yeah, they're if, saving. If lives. only because of the uh, indoctrination of pop culture. And they're yeah, I was about to say job. it's just the stereotype, like you see in movies and TV shows all the time. It's just they're always whatever gender they happen to identify as. They're always hot. Yeah, I mean they're wearing a swimsuit, which is an inherently attractive thing. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Are we off that? I mean, do we have any more to add I'm to done. that? <laughs> I don't ever want to talk about that again. Name one of the seven dwarfs. This is so sad. Grumpy. Sleepy. Uh, happy. Dopey. Is there one named Happy? happy? Yeah. Uh, you guys already named a lot of them. This happy, isn't, sleepy, this grumpy, fair. dopey. I feel like that's a really Sneezy? good way to judge someone's I don't know any others. inner character is you ask them to name a, one of the seven dwarves and whichever one they name first is their truth. Isn't there one with a normal name like Stan or something like yeah, that? Stan, <laughs> Stan Cunningham star. Stan Cunningham. Six, six, six. <laughs> I think what one is of them the is the real name. I think one of them is oh, Doc. Greta. One of them is oh, yeah, named that's, Doc. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, It's a bat. All right. DLC. All right. You know that Doc always got, always got left out of all the games. Docky. All of the dwarf games? He's the odd one out. All right. This question is, would you want to live forever? No. Yes. The answer for me is no. I, bar- um, I barely want to live at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? Why not? Because you get to see everyone that you love and uh, treasure die. And it'll probably go at a faster rate. You'll know someone for like what feels like a year and then they'll die. Yeah, I mean, that'll be really sad, but... And you'll experience it over and over again. You'll never have escape. That's fine. And then, but then you'll constantly be making new memories. So I mean, yeah, but long enough on this earth, you'll realize there's no point to it at all. In no time, okay. the earth will be gone, and yeah. the sun will explode. You'll witness. You'll witness the destruction of the universe. That would be cool to see, but it would be unfortunate if I was just floating in space forever, because that would be incredibly boring. I mean, you wouldn't be able to die. Yeah. So you just. That, be, yeah, I know. On this subject, you'd just be floating around. I honestly, or it would be like honestly. that scene from Gravity, but forever. Uh, yeah, I saw an a or there's a subreddit called Change My View where it's like, I believe that you can't, or that you could possibly live forever, and then it was like Change My View, and then it was like, uh, all the way out from now until like basically the end of anything, and it talks about like the heat death of the universe yeah. and how like. Even if you lived, like, through all these, it, there's, like, a million different things that are, like, okay, this will end all existing life you. 100% except you. And then, like, just the heat death of the universe, there's literally nothing. There's not even space anymore. Okay. So. <laughs> that sounds so crazy. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a trick question. So you can't insane. live forever. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, it would suck. Uh, anyways. Gotta unlock my phone. <laughs> Help. What's for dinner tonight? Oh, no. We're not going to say what we ate for dinner tonight. Chick-fil-A. We can't. All right, so... Uh, Cats how many... out of the bag now. <laughs> how many pull-ups can you do in a row? Um, not Zero. even... Not five. We're nerds. Eight. Five or less. F- you can do... You can't do one. Two? I could probably do one. You can barely do half of one. I can I'm, probably I'm do I'm going to go ahead one. and say right now that I don't think I can do one. I have no upper body strength. I'm not saying I'm not saying I could do one because I'm trying to be like a tough guy. Because even saying one is pathetic. But I feel like I could struggle enough to do one, maybe. I was that guy in elementary school and middle school that couldn't do like any of the things, even though I looked like just an able-bodied. Like, 
<laughs> like you person. looked like you weren't like I people the and same. physically yeah. ill. Yeah, I looked the same as everyone else, but I just couldn't do the things for whatever reason. I, I remember, uh, I remember to just to piss off um, my gym teacher in elementary school. Whenever we would have those things where it's like, how many of these things can you do? I would just intentionally fail. Like I uh-huh. would just like go up and I no, I would go up and I would touch the that bar and like then you. just let go and walk away. Nice. Yeah, so I wouldn't we have even try you, you got no recorded evidence of you ever doing a pull up then. Uh, that might be true. <laughs> All right. I would basically just try to piss off authority. Yeah. It's fun. School was not a bright time for <laughs> it you. It was not. <laughs> Lols. All right. Um, you're, uh, you're boiling me down. <laughs> favorite type of tea. Okay, this is up your guy's alley. Um, rec- well, is do we mean like black, green? Like, Those are all types of tea. Is that what we mean? Like that? Or just like type of like flavor, flavor of tea? Know, it can be, want. yeah, it can be anything. Um, recently my, my, uh, mom or someone bought, um, it's, it's dessert tea. So there's no caffeine, uh, and it's lemon loaf. So it's like a glaze. Oh, it's called glazed lemon loaf. So it's like a hint of lemon and manila. Okay. Uh, it's very good. It's, it's not, it's not sweet though. It just like tastes different than this may be the whitest thing known to man <laughs> maybe <laughs> i do like a good uh green tea but i also uh am partial to <clears throat> orange like citrus flavored oh yeah tea mm-hmm. i the only tea i, I drink that. with any regularity is sweet tea yeah that's sweet not tea real is tea good. it's not real tea i'll i'll say it i already said on the podcast uh <laughs> i'm gonna alienate everyone by saying i dislike Coffee. Sparkling water, coffee, and tea. Yeah. Unsweetened tea. So goodbye, everyone. I just heard goodbye. that. Goodbye. Um, <laughs> goodbye. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I love how just people, cut it out post. like, anyone that doesn't, like, understand what we're talking about already thinks that we're speaking, like, another language. And then you, <laughs> and then you literally went, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> and they're just like, what am I hearing? <laughs> There's literally no one on earth that knew what you were trying to say. <laughs> there's inside jokes, and then there's inside your own brain. <laughs> and then there's strokes. <laughs> and then there's inside strokes. Different strokes for different fakes, you know what I mean? Yeah, hi, I'm Green Ant. <laughs> All right. Are reindeers real creatures? No. Yes. That's a good question, actually. They no, are. they're not. Yes, no. they are. No, they're not. I think they yes, are. Yes, they are. No, they're not. You didn't think narwhals are real. Dang, you don't know any animal. Narwhal, narwhals are not real. You literally live, like, are, half actually. your life not knowing narwhals are real. Okay, this is, this is a funny story that I'll tell in around 30 seconds. In, uh, <laughs> in high school, uh, this was in high school. It was, like, what, junior year, senior year? Uh, I was fully convinced that narwhals were a fantasy creature. And it took getting pulled to the library and finding a book with a picture of narwhals in it. Wow. Like an encyclopedia for me to believe. You went out of your real. comfort zone. I did. You were still stubborn about it. I was. Even afterwards. I was, but you guys like thought Through it was. Character. You guys thought it was the dumbest thing that you've ever heard. No, I, I didn't think it was real. It seems like a fantasy creature. Like it's like a Pegasus. Just yeah, it's like it's a fucking sea unicorn. Yeah, but there's it's recorded like evidence of it. Yeah. No. So on but Discovery I didn't, Channel I didn't like know every about other it. day. Yeah, I, I mean, the Discovery I, Channel. Look, Discovery Channel. I don't believe anything on film anymore. I've seen Iron Man fly around and blow up airports. Like you can, they can make anything look real. Anything with a unicorn horn probably isn't real. I'm just saying. It's, Except it seems, for narwhals. Give me the benefit of the doubt. It seems a little ridiculous. I mean, it does, but I just... Like, when you hear, oh, there's this fucking whale that's, that f- swims around and has a unicorn horn. Yeah, but just there's a giant so horn. many cases of it, and, like, so many serious no, that's things just, about narwhals. That's just the craziest... Like, you just thought, like, the government was just pulling one over on you? It's like, no, they got the narwhal conspiracy. You're acting like I narwhals don't are just, like, in the news every day. Yeah, you're like, acting like, like just narwhals are just, like... Yeah, but no one... I, I guarantee you there's, you know, maybe half the population of the world doesn't even know what a narwhal is. I mean, that's fair, but if they saw evidence of one, like, yeah, that's probably a real animal. That's a real animal. No, it's, they'd, yeah, be, like, they'd, be, like, they'd the be like, wow, that looks like a fucking sea unicorn. That's not real. For me, I literally just had not seen anything except, like, f- like fake, like, fiction about narwhals. I'd never yeah, seen, like, like, like Elf, where it's like, bye, bye. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, that That in itself is a goof because it looks so stupid. Yeah. And it looks Anyways. like it would fit perfectly into that universe. And I want to, they don't even, like, have them at the aquarium or anything. They, they should, don't have them anywhere. They're, they're not real. They're incredibly rare. <laughs> <That's> yeah. <laughs> oh, you're saying they're incredibly rare, so it makes sense that it's weird that there's... No, it doesn't because there's we think just they exist. tons no, and tons of evidence. No, of no, 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 no. All right, man. I looked up reindeer and apparently... We, uh, they're what we call caribou in North America. 
Yeah, I mean, the creature itself, like, that's based on is probably real, but they're not called reindeer. Yes, like, they, they are. They are called reindeer. Are they, though? Yes. All right. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I love how as soon as I say, are they, though, you guys just give up. <laughs> are narwhals real? My narwhal made a real. Nice. My narwhal made real. My narwhal made real. That's, that's what I should have said. Oh, no. Say something in an Asian language. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Song. Uh, I don't know. Do I know anything? Sagoi. I was about to say something offensive. Kawaii. Yeah, kawaii. Itadakimasu! Konnichiwa. This is know, just see? a recipe for it disaster. It is. Let's stop this. Let's stop this. Wilo. This crazy We're train. World travelers. All right. We're learned men. We're cultured people. Yeah. It says, do you respect Kanye West? That's a good question. No. Absolutely not. You're racist. Actually, I respect his... If, if you had asked me that before he had his mental breakdown and married Kim Kardashian and all that, uh, I would say yes. Yeah. I respect his musical talent, uh, and I think his first, like, at least two albums had something to say. Yeah. He had something to say. I don't know what he's really saying anymore, mm-hmm. or if anything. Those first albums, or whatever, were uh, quite good. I mean, I'm not going to say like who he is as a person because i know nothing about him but uh he does act a fool in public (laughs) he does the um he's done some really stupid things the speech where he says he's gonna be president in 2020 or whatever that speech is unintelligible Mm -hmm. like he's not speaking english no yeah no i think ramblings of a madman i think he has like some sort of like he might he has a mental condition I think. it was like when i was listening to tom DeLong talk to joe rogan about how like government officials have (laughs) told him stuff about aliens but some of those are some of those claims <laughs> are being that's proven. That's true, though. <laughs> yeah, some of those claims are being proven. Is that true? Yeah. Really? By yes. who? By like uh, I don't know Trump or something. All right. All right, man. No, I don't know. There was like an article that I read that said like maybe Tom DeLonge isn't so mad after all, and then there was something because didn't they like no didn't they uh, declassify some stuff about like not UFOs but like aircraft testing or something from the government. Well, there's it was something Project Blue Book where they supposedly declassified a bunch of stuff that says from that Roswell UFO, or whatever. Yeah, from Roswell that says that UFOs are real, but that was basically just a ploy to get the UFO people to stop like finding actual government secrets, just to like throw them off the trail. Mm. Just to be well, like, so it was a red herring. Yeah, yeah, it was a red herring. Yeah, mm. but people take that as oh, they actually declassified this stuff, but. Mm. Yeah, no, I don't know. Most people believe that. I mean, I fake. know, I know almost nothing about that. I saw Anyways, for some, yeah, for I some respect reason. Kanye West's uh, <laughs> work ethic and his music, and that's it. Yeah, and I mean, there's yeah, there's his music is good. There's definitely something to uh, like being a public stunt, and like you know, part of it's the showmanship, I'm sure, but also part of him seems like a douche. So, and there's a say. in this day and age, attention is the greatest form of currency. So uh, he has it. He got it. And he has real currency. <laughs> he he probably has, has Bitcoin. Yeah, he probably has Bitcoin also. He has everything that you could really need or want, including Kim Kardashian. That's right. Well, I don't, I don't about, want. I don't know about that. <laughs> don't want or need. Uh, you guys are racist. All right. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, what's the fastest speed you've ever driven in a car? Oh, <laughs> well, are you looking at me? <laughs> I'll say over 100. I'm going to hit over 100, yeah. I've never uh, gunned it in my car. I'm going to say like 110. What was it on? Like a freeway? And were you driving? Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with... I mean, I'll just say it. There was one... uh, I'm going to say it. There was one with... uh, I think the first time I drove really fast in a car was... Not me personally, but in a car. It was uh, was when our friend uh, Kermit... (laughs) Drifted and no, <laughs> no. Um, my mom and I took a road trip to wow. Montana, mm-hmm. and it was in like somewhere in Montana. There was just nothing. Yeah, just nothing. And my mom was like, "Let's go 100." That's that's actually where you do it. Yeah. yeah so that so like, and we hadn't seen a car for like hours. So mm-hmm. at that point, it was like, that's when Yolo. you know there's like tribal police like sitting <clears> behind, <throat> a just brush. waiting yeah. behind like a little cactus, and then the the cactus lifts up, and they're like, "We have we spotted one." That's racist. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I looked at you. I was like, "I'm so sorry." I just keep. Uh, <laughs> you keep accusing us of racism. I'm wielding it's a heavy the boy blade. Who cried wolf, <laughs> and I'm swinging it without. Uh, you are with reckless abandon. Yes. you're Kylo Ren. Um, you're nothing. 
Uh, and then recently, um, I coming back late at night on the freeway at like 3 a.m. or something like that. Uh, I went like 100 and something in my car. Mm-hmm. It was dangerous. I shouldn't have done it. You were survived. I got scared. You wanted a sick thrill, and you got it. <laughs> I did. I, I. It was definitely like I could feel. Uh, I felt alive for around 10 seconds. So that was that was cool. It feels good. It feels good. Turns out it's what a concept, right? Being you know alive. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be clipped. That was the perfect response. <laughs> that was really good. All right. Um, yeah, no, I don't recommend going fast in, in a car because it doesn't feel good afterwards. You just feel really scared. You know, my situation is the same. Just, I think I was in uh, driving to South Dakota and yeah, going through the middle of bumfuck nowhere is pretty like easy to go wyoming very fast. yeah actually yeah. it actually was yeah what there's literally just roads there where i was like it's just straight there's no one here like just going yeah that's yeah, the I've perfect never... situation to do it yeah definitely and i've safest. never uh never done that uh yeah i've never like done a long road trip where i was driving or anything so i've never had a mm. good opportunity but uh i've definitely been to oregon like corvallis and stuff like that and there's definitely like farmland where there's like yeah. it's a lawless land, so <laughs> where anything could happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I think the rule of thumb is if you see at least a few tumbleweeds coming across the road, you can go a hundred. You can go like seventy, eighty. And then a big, like a bigger than any of them, a boulder tumbleweed will come out and then destroy. Your <laughs> and car. then you'll hit your car, and then your car will just like lift up over it. <laughs> yeah. <and> <laughs> it will grab your car. And yeah, you're, it'll grab your car and be like, hey. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Stop. Going so fast over here? It'll rough you up. Yeah, and ask where you're from. It'll it'll say, "Didn't you see the sign?" And it'll, you'll look over, and it'll be like that little like little baby sign with the flag, like in, that they put in neighborhoods when you're going too fast. But it's a little oh, tumbleweed yeah. holding the flag, and these, like a little green like uh, walkie boy. Yeah, and it's like he's showing you that he's concerned about his tumble children, his tumble <laughs> kids, it's tumble babies, All right. tumble baby boys. Uh, that was, that was yes, that was the last question of that segment. There's plenty more segments. Let's go! <laughs> cool. We're going on an adventure. That was fun. How did you feel about that segment, Coulter? Um, oh, sorry, Colton. I feel like half the questions. Thank you. I feel like <laughs> half the questions were really bad. <laughs> yeah. Or at least cringe or basic. Yeah, yeah. but we made it fun. Yeah. Jordan. Sometimes yeah. you got to embrace the basic. That's right. I agree. Now it's time to embrace our love for cinema. That's right. In the top 10 films of 2017, respectively. Right. Our personal top 10. Oh, that's right. Okay, yes. Yeah. Now, who wants to go first? We all have our list prepared. Hmm. Interesting question. Let's flip a coin. All right, let's oh, flip God. Kermit. <laughs> that's, well, that's not going to work for so many reasons. <laughs> okay, why not? <laughs> because well, you have to shoot down my idea. There's only two sides to Kermit. What are you going to say? I don't know. There's only two sides. Uh, his good side and his okay, better Coulter, side. Okay, Coulter, let's hear it. Let's hear right. top ten. Champs. All right. Actually, wait. Hold on. Before we before we do this, I have something to bring up. And then we want to hear yours. Are Coulter. you going to read yours from ten to one? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna read mine from yeah yeah. I'm gonna read I'm gonna read mine from one three seven nine four. I'm pretty six, sure two. I've talked about like all of these on the podcast before. I think Probably. I have too. I would hope so. If, um, if it made your top ten, I would hope we had talked about it at some point. All right, so I'll let you know if it's not the case, but I'm pretty I'll sure let it you is. Know, I'm gonna... <laughs> okay, so what do you think my top ten was, Jordan? <laughs> I'm trying to guess your number one movie, and it's in my head somewhere. You might. Okay, you so guys, actually, yeah. Before I say it, you can guess my top okay. one. And I don't then want I'll you just to say it. I don't want you to say which one it is. Well, yeah, I won't right. say what my top one is. You guys can guess it, and then I'll read the full top ten. Okay, all right. Okay. We'll do that for everyone. Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be so fun. <laughs> Embrace the basic. <laughs> Embrace it. Okay, so well, <laughs> nice. Thanks. Um. Okay, so, uh, in my search, I am I the only one who struggles to remember what movies came out yeah. that year? Oh, I, sorry. I mean, no. Because I was going through, yes. I was going through and looking at, uh, or I was thinking in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, like blah blah was good, and then I started thinking, oh, that was a good one too. Wait, did that come out this year? And then yeah. I had to look up. Uh, 2017 in film on Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Um, they were just on Google, but I got to this page on Wikipedia, and um, there's a lot on here about like the sexual abuse with Harvey Weinstein, mm-hmm. uh, Weinerstein, um, and all that got stuff. <laughs> you put him in his place with that one. I did, but uh, what I found interesting everything. is 
some information about uh, highest grossing films mm -hmm. and some things that you guys might be may or may not be surprised to hear. So I'm excited. Here we go. Um, Dane, I'm excited to good. hear about this. That's good. That's that's, that's good. Great. That's so good. I'm glad to hear it. All right, Beauty and the Beast, The Fate of the Furious, Star Wars: The Last Jedi, oh, is this and top to bottom worldwide gross. I'm just reading this really quickly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you can just if you can just let me finish. <laughs> well, he just started rattling off movies. I, I know. Like, What's happening? I'm just reading this. Thank you. I'm just reading. Go this. ahead. Beauty Sam. and the Beast, The Fate of the Furious, Star Wars: The Last Jedi, and Despicable Me Three. Have each well, we don't know what we're talking about. So. each grossed over $1 billion and are ranked as the Billion? 10th, 11th, 12th, and 25th highest grossing films of all time. Yeah. And they all came out this year. With the latter being the fourth highest grossing animated film, Despicable Me 3. Uh, we have more to talk about with Despicable Me, but how do you feel about that being We one have of more the, to talk about with uh, that? Somewhat. Uh, how do you feel about that being one of the, one of the highest grossing films of all time? I mean, it's. I don't like it, especially because it's the third one, and no one cares about it. Yeah, I mean, I that's what. That's obviously, what I, people care about it, but it's minions. It was interesting to me because the third one came out, and I, th I thought to myself, "Wow, they're still making those," and I didn't even think to myself that you know anyone would be excited for it. I it mean, was just not because I'm not, but you're I mean, not the person who they're targeting. No, I know, but that's not why I was surprised. I was surprised because I felt like at the third one, it should be losing steam by now. Yeah, it's run. It like it's and had. Minions its, are hot. I guess. I mean, coming off the heels of, is it the first Despicable Me since Minions? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's true. Then yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that might be the reason. I guess so. Um, and then also Spider-Man: Homecoming came out this year, and that's the fiftieth highest grossing film of all time. So it's just interesting that um, these. Is this adjusted for inflation? Mm, probably. It doesn't not. say. If it doesn't say, then it's probably not. Yeah, it's probably not. I mean, it's um, really... I mean, to me, it doesn't seem that surprising because so many more people are watching movies that, like, every new movie that comes out is, like, the next highest grossing movie. Yeah, like, and inflation. It just continues to grow. Like, that's not yeah, that surprising. That's true. Also, the 50th highest movie, like, that's nothing. <laughs> that's like, not that's not a marker. Yeah. Yeah. But then, here we go with this one. Um, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's been a hot topic this year and going forward. And every year. Uh, <laughs> For the past... This is Five. interesting to me because you keep hearing these things about, uh, you know, everyone's like, oh my god, superhero fatigue, there's too many movies coming out every year, like, what's the next one gonna be, you know, Thor 7 or whatever, and then, you know, it just keeps breaking these ridiculous records. How do you guys feel about, you know, the supposed state of the Marvel movies or superhero movies, but they keep shattering records? Again, it's the same thing. Everyone watches the movies, and there's just so many people worldwide watching them, it's just not... And also... But it just seems like all you hear about is either people being like, oh my god, I love the Marvel movies, or like, oh, fuck those. Like, those I, are the only movies that come out. There's so literally, they come out all the time. Like, that's... that's Yeah. Yeah, that is a the, big portion. They have a lot of distribution... Or not distribution, but uh, what do you call it? Advertising and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, also, if you think about it, the people that are saying those things are people that are entrenched in the film, like, community. Yeah. And then the majority of the people obviously are not. So when people that aren't... That don't care at all about, like critiquing movies or anything like that are like oh let's go see a movie what's the simplest thing that i can look at right the big now? marvel movie yeah so that's, that's fair that's what it is so this is uh some interesting information the about slack job the masses, mcu that's true <laughs> the marvel cinematic universe became the first film franchise to gross more than 11 billion dollars with the release of guardians 2 with the subsequent release of spider-man homecoming it became the first film franchise to gross more than 12 billion dollars and with the release of Thor Ragnarok, the MCU became the first film franchise to gross more than $13 million, all releasing in the same year, which is crazy. It also became the first film franchise to release three movies in one year that all made over $800 million worldwide and opened to over $100 million <sighs> domestically. Yeah. That's insane. At this, it's, it's like, honestly, I get it, like, I'm numb to it. I know, but it's just, when you hear that, it's just... Yeah. I don't know. It's mind-boggling. For some reason, it makes me feel a little bit bad because it's, like, not necessarily... It's, like, based on something. It's not, like, an original concept. It's not necessarily, like, moving film forward in yeah. any specific way other than That's... maybe employing a lot of people and, like, inspiring yeah. new filmmakers in some way, maybe. But, yeah. I, I mean, they are well-made. Yeah, like, There's I'm not a lot of like say that they're all bad movies. I don't like some of them, most of them, but... Like they're not bad, they're not poorly made movies. Like they they make they make that much money for a reason because they're appealing. Like it's mm -hmm. yeah. For some reason, there's a there's a bad feeling 
and I, I have a bad feeling about this, but um, <laughs> nice. no, it's there's nothing wrong with the movie, so I should just be fine with it. Yeah, if they keep making good movies, they should probably be at yeah. the top of the. I mean, leaderboards for me, like it's kind of just disheartening to be like, okay, like of of course, like the most like the people who make the most money are the people already making the most money from like Marvel films because like that's just what makes the money, I guess. Like it'd be nice to see some like out of nowhere movie make a billion dollars, but it just doesn't. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. It's fair. Um, and then... Okay, so the rest of this is just useless. But the last thing that we'll mention is <laughs> about Despicable Me, of course. The Despicable Me franchise became the highest grossing animated franchise ever. $3.6 billion, to be exact. Surpassing the Shrek franchise. No, no. And also Come the up. first non- Even Di- Shrek. And also the first non-Disney no. franchise to have two films hit over $1 billion. Two of the two of the four, I guess. Oh, I think they're just they're disregarding minions. So that's a spinoff. Two of the three Despicable Me movies have made over one billion dollars. Yeah. Okay, that is unacceptable. We need to say Dude, prayer for Shrek. Seriously, rest All right. in peace, buddy. Okay, ready? I'm gonna help us out here. Okay. Bum, 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 Dane, you say the prayer, and I'll do this. Bum, okay. Bum, bum, bum. Shrek, it seems like just yesterday we witnessed your glorious awakening from the swamp. And now you'll retreat back to the swamp from once you came because this world is no longer for you. You are no longer for this realm. Somebody! (laughs) Somebody, somebody. Somebody, please dethrone Despicable Me. As the and highest have, grossing animated film no, we need a new Shrek all time. Yeah, we need that's right. Rally for Shrek. Shrek needs Shrek in our darkest hour. We we need you to return. <laughs> a hero will return. We we and need Shrek green. to emerge from the swamp from once he came. We've had enough yellow. It's time for green. That's right. Let's go. Let's fucking go, dude. The night's always green. <laughs> the night's always greenest before the dawn. <laughs> nice. The the swamp is always darkest <laughs> before the dawn. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> All right. All right. So that was just some uh, information that I that I found in my you know journey to find out which movies I watched actually released this year. That is interesting. It it kind of made me a little bit sad. Um, mostly sad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you see what movies are making all the money, you get a little bit sad. Yeah. All right. Now the on to tens. our each okay. top ten. Let's try to guess what Coulter's number one movie is. Though. Okay, your number one of this year is going to be Wind River. When Weaver. When when Weaver. Weaver. Um, that was also going to be my guess, but to try to uh, cover the odds a little bit, uh, I'm going to go oh. with. <laughs> that was gross. <laughs> this is going to be. Hmm, we don't have a lot Train of time. to Busan. All right. That was 2016. International. It came to America in 2017. Just hold your horse. Did it actually? Yeah. Just hold your horses, champ. Wow. You're going to have to rework your list. All right. Number I might 10. have to rework it to add Train to Busan. I'm not kidding. <laughs> we'll go ahead. Um, all right. So number 10 and 9, these are movies that I enjoyed, but, uh, or, yeah, enjoyed, but honestly, I uh, don't really care if I ever see them again. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> I, w- I was reaching for these last two. All right. Number 10, Baby Driver. Um yeah, it was it was a good original movie, um, and I enjoyed what they were trying to do. I didn't. I had a lot of hype going into it, but um, it it did kind of disappoint me. It's funny that it's number ten. Um, yeah. So yeah, the execution was a little off. It could have been better, but it was uh, one of the most appealing movies of the year to me. Number nine, Guardians of the Galaxy two. Um, mm-hmm. You can't go wrong with Guardians of the Galaxy in terms of just having, you know, dumb fun. Um, It was funny, possibly a little too funny. Uh, (laughs) Not as emotionally, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And there was weird, like, moments where uh, there was kind of mean-spirited humor where people were getting hurt and were supposed to, like, feel (laughs) a different way about it. Like, when they were all, like, getting... Uh, hit up into the air by oh, rockets yeah. like mines and it's like dun, 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 and then it's like they're dying. I don't know if that's the song they use but yeah they're basically like getting maimed and we're <laughs> supposed to be laughing like what's happening those people are going to be crippled for the rest of their lives yeah and then when like they're 
uh, like peeing on baby Groot, like in yeah. the thing, and you're just like, what? Like, don't do this that. Is, this is bullying. What's like, what's happening here? I know we're supposed to feel bad, but it's actually, yeah. I'm actually feeling bad. Groot deserves better. <laughs> baby Groot. Uh, justice for Groot. <laughs> yeah, justice for baby Groot. Free Groot. Free Groot. Free baby. Groot, Groot lives matter too. Baby Groot. All right. Uh, number eight, Murder on the Orient Express. So the rest wow. of these are really? um, yeah, or the rest of these are movies that I had kind of low expectation expectations for, and then they surprised me, or at least they surprised me in some way. So Murder on the Orient Express, hmm. um, and I would never expect you to put that on your list. Yeah, just because it was a mystery, like I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Very uh, visually nice, like very nice to look at, and um, yeah, like the. Uh, the whole storyline played out pretty well. I like the main character. He's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I'm down to see the sequel if they do it. All right. They probably will. Number seven, Jumanji. This is another surprise. Whoa! I just got blown back in my chair. Yeah, seriously. These are just... Guys, remember, this is my top ten, okay? Know, it's my sensibilities. And my sensibilities are fun movies. Personal top ten. This was a funny movie and surprised me with how uh, much fun I had. It's a classic adventure movie uh, done in a unique, interesting premise. I believe it. Uh, forget everything about the original Jumanji and just think about this as a film. That's I not do named want Jumanji. to see it. If it wasn't named Jumanji, uh, everybody would love it unabashedly. I agree. Um, something to think about. Number six, Get Out. This mm. is much higher on everybody else's list, probably. Um, but I, don't know, actually. I uh, didn't love this as much as everybody else did. Um, I don't know. I, I it's hard to put into words exactly what disappointed me about it. It I don't think it went very far in either the horror or the comedy direction, and it kind of like dwelled on like, wow, they sure are like being subtly racist to him. It's like I know that's the point of the whole movie. It's like you know a commentary on mm. that sort of racism and stuff like that. But as as a movie, it was just like okay, I I get it. Like I don't know. I like the premise, good original movie, um, and I had fun, especially like at the end when it's like, okay, I don't know what's necessarily going to happen next, Uh, and I enjoyed the premise, but um, too much of the movie was just them at the party with them subtly being racist to him, and I'm like, okay, where is this going? Like, I'm not scared, I'm just like, I'm just like, okay, they're being racist. (laughs) Like, that's not necessarily like my favorite thing. Anyways, all right, so those were the bottom five. And these are the top five, which I actually enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, Thor Ragnarok. Good movie. Fun Great movie. movie. Um, there's not much to say that hasn't already been said. Uh, it's a star-studded engagement uh, yeah. featuring uh, Jeff Goldblum in a funny role. I wish there was it's more great. of him. It's true. Um, I, love, I love Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, a lot of fun fight scenes, a lot of really like crazy-ass uh visuals the cgi is fun because they actually use it in a way so that it's like a fucking cartoon yeah so that's really cool and cartoon (laughs) um this is really getting to you (laughs) i'm breaking down all right number four john wick 2 we all love the john wick saga um john wick 2 was just an extension of john wick 1 uh some people might not have liked it because of that it may have gone a little too far for some people um or the plot might not have been as you know concise as maybe they wanted but still john wick shooting a bunch of men in the head um is very nice choreography uh yeah it's just a cool movie we need more cool action movies with cool guys running around we do uh yeah so and then i really like the end um the end of it like sets up kind of an interesting dynamic for if they do a chapter three which i think they will it's in production Um, right now yeah, so I'm excited to see John Wick 3. Uh, okay, the top three are yeah. the actual favorite movies of the year. These ones are the movies that I recommend that everyone needs to see. Also, very big surprises from me. All right, number three, Your Name, because the it came out... Uh, uh-huh. It's an anime film, came out in 2016 in Japan, but the American release was 2017, so it counts. Um, Your Name, it's... Uh, a romance at, at its core Yep. Um, to a boy and a girl. I think I can say that with yes. certainty. They both identify as, yeah, they self-identify They as never as said their pronouns, but I'm going to assume. I'm okay. sorry. You shouldn't ever assume, but I'll let this one slide. All right. Yeah, in this case, I think it's okay. Yeah. Your name. But never again. 
Yeah. Never again. I'm serious, Coulter. Are you a man? No. You're going to need a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <No. laughs> I'm a baby boy. So your name, it made me feel all the feels. Um, it actually made me emotional. And if a movie can do that, uh, it's a good It's a good movie. I 100% agree. It's also a um, story across time and space. Um which take from that what you will. Yeah, I think it's a very gonna... unique premise on top of it being a good love story. Yeah, and a great mean, love story. I kind of uh, spoiled it a little bit, but like the twist is pretty crazy. Yeah. There's, there's kind of a big twist, so mm-hmm. that's really fun. And then obviously beautiful visuals. If you even just watch the trailer, you'll see that it's like insanely yeah. well drawn and yeah, it's it's beautifully animated. Yeah, um, and drawn. And it's also like young people. I like stories about you know uh coming of age to some degree i don't love every like quirky ass like coming of age story but i do love um youthful optimism stuff like that so it had a lot of that uh okay number two guys your choices are about to come into play wind river i did fuck i did it i did it (laughs) wind river was a very good movie damn it we all know that i enjoyed it if you saw my review um, the writer of Sicario and from, or what, is it to Hell or High Water? I think. It's just called Hell or High Water. Oh, Hell or High Water. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this movie is so realistic, uh, crime, uh, movie set in Wyoming. And you literally do not know what is going to happen. And something like, it will unfold in a way that's realistic. And so for that reason, you just have absolutely no clue. It's kind of like Breaking Bad in that regard that like Mm. anything could happen and something will happen and you're going to be satisfied by it. So yeah, that's, that's the best way I can describe that. It's definitely an adults movie, uh, in the way that it's a bit of a slow burn. There's a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of very quiet, uh, moments. There's not a ton Mm. of action, but it's so satisfying if you can make it all the way through. And yeah, it's. An incredible movie that I recommend you all see, and it stars Jeremy Renner. <laughs> I am sad that I haven't seen that movie because I was very interested when you brought it up the first time. So yeah, that's on my list of movies I wish I had watched last year. Yeah, I'm sure you'll see it at some point. All right, so you guessed it. Number one, Train to Busan. Hmm. Uh, it was released in 27 on American Home. Uh, Video. Home, home video, video. <laughs> home video is still fine. It's, it's fine, but it just sounds archaic. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like video cassette. Yeah, but I mean, plug in the old VHS player and pop in the tape. Yeah, so it may have been like at a limited release in 2016 or something like that. Is as far as I know, it was just released on like home video <laughs> cassette. Um, so yeah, we watched it on <laughs> we watched it on Netflix in 2017. Uh, very very good movie. Um, it's a, is it Korean? Yeah. Yeah. Korean movie. Uh, not in English at all. We had to look at the subtitles and, um, that's kind of interesting that three, my top or two of the movies in my top three are subtitled, not in English. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, very, ex- or very emotional movie. Um, in the beginning, I wasn't completely invested. I was like, okay, this is just like something this is going to be a diversion this is nothing special like we've seen a million zombie mm-hmm. movies and then as it goes on it like you start to care more about the characters um it unfolds in a very consistent pace um so that you're never like oh, okay this went over the rails way too yeah. fast um my only gripes with it are that there's so, like a little bit uh anime ish moments where like there's a million zombies that fly out of a window mm-hmm. or something like that and it looks super fake or just like people are running too fast jumping too high or something like that the like cgi zombie parts are definitely noticeable but you can yeah. definitely overlook it for they the do have of a lot film. of real people in there mm-hmm. on, real the tra- on the train real zombies pretty much like the whole like train stuff was yeah. mainly <clears> all <throat> real so yeah um there were zombies made real i mean the main real <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, uh, at the end of the day, it's about a papa and his little girl. That's right. And, um, <clears throat> my God. I'm falling apart. Voldemort. I'm falling um, apart. <laughs> the boy who lived. And, uh, <laughs> the end is so great. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to say anything about it. Um, incredibly emotional. Um, as it gets to the end, the emotion only ramps up. 
and uh, I was just watching like scenes from it, um, like on YouTube, and I was like. I was about to cry, like, just from watching a YouTube video. I was like, this is insane. Like, they did yeah. this so well. So, yeah. Um, extremely satisfying movie. Um, definitely watch it if you get the chance, buds. I agree so, yeah. with what you said about, like... I feel like the gimmick of, like, the father-daughter thing in a lot of movies will, like... It could have just fallen completely flat and, like, oh, well, this is, like, super cliche. But it's done so well, like, in that movie that it's super, like... You, you're immediately, like, into the situation, believe it. Like, it doesn't seem forced at all. And mm -hmm. that helps that movie a lot. Yeah. All right. Number one for Coulter, Train to Busan. Uh, oh, you've been rearranging your list. I was I like, have what's been, going on? I have How many <laughs> movies have you changed? Uh, Like, four. <laughs> well, no, I mean, they, they changed. Well, you have to move the whole thing. Yeah, I had to, yeah. yeah, that's the only reason why. I didn't actually move anything but one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Am I going? Jordan, do you want to go? Sure. Okay. Uh, a lot of the movies, Coulter said, I also have on my list, so I'm not going to go into them too much, uh, especially these first uh, couple or few. Uh, but number 10, Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 2. Again, this is on there because I wanted this to be a top 10 list and not a top 9 list. I, really, I like Gardens of the Galaxy 2, but it is what it is. Uh, we've discussed it at length on the other one, but on the other podcast where we saw it, but it's it's a good movie. It is. It's the 10th best movie of last year. Number nine, John Wick Volume 2. That's low. It's, it's, it's lower the, than me. It's the ninth best movie of last year. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I like John Wick 2 a lot. I think it isn't... I, I don't like where the story really goes too much. Or like, I like the idea of the story. I don't like the execution. Yeah. I don't think it comes off that well. Uh, but I do think it looks incredible, and John Wick is still a masterpiece. Uh, so, John Wick 2, excellent movie. Number seven, Train to Busan. I'm sorry, Coulter. Oh, no. That's I, fine. It was my sensibilities. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to say that it's literally the perfect movie for uh, me. Like, okay. fighting for your life uh, with, like, an emotional family connection, uh, going through, like, a beginning, middle, and end, like, hero's journey type of deal, and, like, heroes versus villains. That's all, like, directly in my wheelhouse. I'm going to go off on a very minor tangent. This is literally just The Last of Us. Fair enough. Uh, you should play The Last of Us if you like all those things. <clears throat> yeah. It, it's that movie, except... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still just oh, absolutely wait. baffled that you... Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot my list was uh, slightly out of order. Uh, Train to Busan is number seven. Number eight... I skipped number eight. I forgot my list is not in <laughs> listed order. It's all over the place. Just read them in the correct Anyways, order. Anyways, number eight, Kong Skull Island. This hmm. is probably a, a sleeper hit. I'll say it. No one else has this on their list, I guarantee it, but... That's uh, true. Saw I this saw, movie. like, a list of critics, and I saw at least one or two that had Kong Skull Island on it. This movie, to me, I was like, okay, I had zero expectations going into it, which probably helped a little bit, mm -hmm. but, like, it's one of the movies that, for me, I was like, okay, I'm, like, super into this because it's just a giant monster fighting, like, a bunch of other giant monsters, and it looks like the visual effects in that movie are incredible at some places. Uh, so... I would highly recommend that movie just for a... If you're just looking for a little fun one-off movie, uh, the human side of that movie ain't great, like most monster movies, but they gotta be in there. But King Kong is... This is the best King Kong I've ever seen. Uh, the actual monster is great. And also there's a Godzilla uh, Easter egg in there, so... Did you like the, Kong, the King Kong movie by Peter Jackson? Yeah, I think that's a great movie. This movie... Kong Skull Island is more fun than that movie, and King Kong is more intimidating in Kong Skull Island by, like, it's not even comparable, mm -hmm. which I think is cool. Like, Kong in the Peter Jackson one is, like, intimidating. In Skull Island, he's a monster. Like, he's Godzilla-like, and that's really cool to see. Okay, seven, like I said, Train to Busan. Uh, number six, Baby Driver. A little higher on the list than Coulter. I like that movie a lot. Um... Not high enough to put in the top five, but I thought it was unique. Uh, has a cool vibe to it. Uh, yeah, I thought it was fun. Number five, Thor Ragnarok. Hmm. Again, same thing as Coulter. I think uh, a lot of Marvel movies, I think the CGI hurts me a lot when I watch it. Uh, and also, I think the jokes were getting a little stale. But in Ragnarok, uh, the jokes were on point, And the CGI is used in a way that makes it, like... It enhances everything that everyone is doing and doesn't just completely take you out of the experience, which I think is important. 
Okay. There's a lot of cartoony shite happening, like when there's that huge ass yeah. dog that just like came out of nowhere. Yeah, like that's true. And, and like that part's goofy, but like still is he's like fighting Hulk, so it's like okay, they're both CGI. The whole thing is whatever, mm-hmm. and it's just two big dudes fighting each other, and that's fun to watch. Uh, We've come four, to accept it. Yeah. Number four, Logan. Mm. Yeah, I thought about putting that on. I probably could have switched that out for something. Probably. I honestly feel like you probably should have Logan on there besides Guardians of the Galaxy, but uh, it's okay. It's your Logan, list. it's just so deeply entrenched in the X-Men mythology that I'm just not a part of. And I, I, I'm not a huge X-Men guy either. I have watched most of the movies, but I like I like Wolverine, and I do like the idea of the X-Men and some of the other movies. Like First Class, I think, is great. The other ones after that, not so great, but they have their moments. Uh, and yeah, Logan is just... Like, that's what I want to see, like, more superhero movies become. Like, it's not nearly as, like, cartoony and just crazy. Like, this movie is gritty and, like, not realistic, but, like, it's dark. And, like, that's mm-hmm. cool to see for a X-Men movie, even though it's not truly X-Men. But also, it's just writing, emotionally, great film. Hmm, maybe a little bit of a parallel to Train to Busan a little bit. A little bit. Well, yeah. Sort of. A little bit of a same feel yeah. type deal. I mean, obviously not exactly. But. Not quite. No zombies in it. Though that Cal- Caliban, Calabar guy looks He's like a zombie. pretty much a zombie. <laughs> uh, okay. Number three, Your Name. Mm. Same spot as Coulter's List, coincidentally. This movie, uh, fantastic. I Anime corner. Anime corner, yeah. Like, not much <laughs> else I can say. It's an emotional movie. Made me feel something in my cold heart. And I like that. It's also from the same person who did uh, five centimeters per second, uh, which is similar-ish. It's probably not quite as good, but uh, I would uh, consider putting that onto the wacky film list since we all like your name. It's a good and also beautiful looking film. Did he also do In the Garden of Words? I think or like so. Like The Garden of Words or something. Something like that. Yes. There, all of his movies are about romance and sadness yeah. <laughs> and cool animation yeah and there's definitely parallels in uh five centimeters to your name yeah uh, okay. i think um quick tangent on that i think your name is the highest grossing japanese film right. of all time yeah 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 it's pretty crazy i think it's definitely the highest grossing anime film of all time yeah so still uh i have to add the caveat of inflation to every one of these <laughs> things because Fair inflation enough. exists that's true all right, number two. Did we guess what your number one was going to be? Oh no! Well, there's not many movies. Left. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, <laughs> we should have done that. You could try. Uh, actually, I don't. I actually I don't, don't know. know at this point. I would say maybe. You've said a lot. Yeah. Get out. No, that's not going to be Jordan's number one. Yeah, I feel like it's not either. But that's um, one of the few movies that he hasn't said yet. That might be number two. It might not be on Wind at River. All. No. That's I don't a know. Movie actually. that you haven't seen. Um. Fuck. Blade Runner. Blade Runner might be number two. Yeah. That was number one. I don't know, actually. <laughs> right. I actually don't know. Whatever. Those you're, are, you're a wild card, Jordan. I threw out two movies. Yeah. We'll see if those make an appearance. I'll say Blade Runner's number one. I'll just throw it out there. Go okay. ahead. Number two, Blade Runner. Damn it. Blade Runner, uh, fantastic movie. It looks beautiful. I think it's... Uh, we've set our piece on it a lot, but people probably should watch that movie. If only for the visual and kind of like the sound of it. it sounds cool, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, only. I mean, the story is, if you're not on board to the with the story at the start, you're not going to like it throughout the movie. Like, it's just, you're either into it or you're not. And, mm-hmm. like, that's that's just how it's going to be for people. But I do think, regardless of that, visually, it's stunning. So, you should watch it. Uh, not you, because you've seen it. <laughs> or you, because you've seen it. Number one, Get Out. Get out. Really? Get out. Really? That is kind of surprising. Yeah, yeah I, did not, I did not expect uh, that. I think that movie is... I like the horror tension. No. <laughs> I think I like it because I'm not racist. Uh, Sorry. I derailed everything. The tension in that movie is, like, incredibly real, and I think also it's a very important movie. Uh, I don't want to get into the social aspects of it, but I do think that's a part of that movie that's interesting to see come out. Uh, Maybe I'm just not woke enough. It's possible. If you get a little woke, go back and watch it. I mean, you'll be woker. You'll be a woke woke man. But when, yeah. like, did you actually feel like tense when they were just being subtly racist to him? Like, is that part of the tension? I don't think it's tense so much as it's you feel very uh, like uncomfortable would be a word I would say. Uneasy would be another word I would throw out there. Like, you, it, I didn't ever feel 
tension as in like you know a typical horror movie where you know you see like michael myers or jason like creeping up behind someone with a knife or something like that it just it more like you know that there's something very wrong going on and you're you're desperate to kind of not desperate but you're really really curious to figure out what's going on and why all this stuff is happening and throughout all of that uh there's like this underlying like underlying like um i don't know sense of like dread almost i would say like, you're kind of just dreading finding out what's going on, and the whole time you're just like, oh, this, this is not good. Like, mm. Yeah, I never really felt I don't know. I, did, I didn't feel tense in the sense, like, I was gripping like my chair and being like, oh, my God, like, what the fuck's going to happen? But it was just, I just felt uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Until like, the guy, like, snaps out of it, they take the picture of him, and then he, like, says, get out or whatever. He, like, comes at him and says, like, get out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the titular get out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, until that moment, I felt nothing. Hmm, interesting. Except, like, you know, mild entertainment at, like, because they're funny and, like, yeah, they're good actors. And Part stuff. of it, to me, also, is that it's not just that it is, like, a horror movie. Like, it is creepy and, like, unnerving at points and, like, but also, like, it's super well written. Like, that was, like, what kept me entertained, like, in the first parts, too. It's like, wow, like, I think this is, this movie is incredibly well written enough for me to like even when it's not scary that i'm still interested and just yeah like the underlying sense that something is happening here is was fascinating to me and also just again like the like like, the whole time you know there's something wrong yeah and it's just like in a movie i want to put myself in someone's shoes i'm like okay like if i'm gonna put myself in this dude's shoes like he's literally feeling like just so fucking freaked out from like the weird shit that's happening and just like everyone's just like acting just a little bit off it's like okay something here is about to pop off and it does and that's honestly like not even my favorite part of the movie the like the ending is entertaining but it's not like it jumps the shark a little bit but yeah. I, I think it's just um, i think it had to go there for me personally yeah. or else i wouldn't have liked it as yeah. much i think it's just well written and it's a really uh, smart movie and it's very novel yeah it's, it was very realistic i'll say that yeah, yeah did a good I, job of capturing what it's like to be not black no, i won't say that what it's like to uh be that age and like sure. go to you know family gatherings and stuff yeah. like that so yeah i think it's a smart and important movie of last year yeah i, I mean, agree your number maybe one movie i need to blade rewatch runner. it maybe if i rewatch it my I'll number one movie is blade runner absolutely yeah i agree okay i'm just gonna say straight up <clears throat> okay so it was made um, for you <laughs> basically yeah uh okay so number 10 is dunkirk so dunker dunker i barely so (laughs) so (laughs) nice on when i was coming up with my top 10 um this is the movie that i added last when i had a top nine and i was like okay well i need a top 10 um i know this is a very controversial movie i know that uh you guys didn't like it (laughs) too much um but i put it on there because i didn't dislike it i just you're just like it's okay Yeah. yeah i put it on here mostly because um i think it's I mean, I am a Christopher Nolan fan, so I probably would have just put it on there anyway, maybe, unless it was just completely terrible, but um, I think it's an interesting movie because it's very experimental, uh, and I appreciate that because uh, there's not a lot of character development, there's not even a lot of dialogue, um, there's hardly even really a story, um, necessarily, in the traditional sense, but... um, It was an experience, I will say, and I felt... uh, I felt like I was very immersed in the movie for the for the running time. Um, I think technically it's one of the best, the best, the best, best looking. Best. I think it's one of the best looking and sounding movies uh, of the past few years, maybe ever, uh, because like they used you know it's real one of the loudest real planes, <laughs> real planes. They used you know l- tons of real explosions and just mm-hmm. crazy stuff. So the amount of work that went into that movie is. Care. jaw-dropping i will recommend it for that would you use the word care uh yes but i'm gonna say work this time because it seems like they actually put a shit ton of work into that movie yeah. which, which is insane yeah so and yeah Christopher Christopher Nolan doesn't care I, he doesn't care and he is also known for putting in basically as much work as possible just for the sake of doing extra work kind of seems like sometimes. uh maybe yeah did you hear that he planted like 500 acres or not 500 five 500 let's say five acres of uh corn uh, for, for the for the interstellar scene where he's driving through the cornfield, hmm. uh, he because he wanted that. it to be realistic and he didn't want to use CGI. He sowed the seeds and, and then killed the. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And then and then he ended up uh, 
uh, selling all of the corn afterwards wow. to make money back for the profit of the movie. He made a profit on the corn and <laughs> helped their budget or something. Corn. He went in. <laughs> his corn made real. With that <laughs> corn. <laughs> no, um, but I was just going to say also that he continues to shoot on film, which is an extra complication that he definitely doesn't need yeah. to do. Yeah, and he actually, that's interesting. He shot on a 70 millimeter film for mm-hmm. Dunkirk, which is uh, just so unnecessary yeah. but <laughs> awesome i mean it's unnecessary in the sense that like half you know maybe 75 percent of the people who want to see that movie don't even really know the importance i of mean that. i am a fan of film and i barely notice like you can put a filter on that looks more or less but did you watch it in 70 film. millimeter no no i guess not did you see uh uh hateful eight in 70 millimeter yes so you can definitely tell when it, I didn't see Dunkirk in 70 millimeter, but you can definitely tell when you're watching Hateful Eight that it's a little bit different than your standard. Is it just grittier because of the crappy film grain? It's or? grittier and it's also uh, a wider field of view. Okay. So you can see like I guess more. You can't do that with. You can see more like on you top and bottom and <laughs> yeah I don't know. <laughs> but it's it's different. I I it's always grainy. say it's it's fair enough to use something that has like a vignette over it because that definitely adds a look to it. So fair. Yeah. Enough. People so for, use color grading all the time. It's I, no different. I can that. imagine that scene Dunkirk in 70 millimeter would have been fantastic. I'm um, mm-hmm. kind of sad that I didn't. Um, so yeah, it's not, it is the, I would say it's maybe the 10th best movie out there uh, of last year. But for me, at least I put it as number 10 because uh, of the experience I had while watching it. Um, number nine is baby driver. So uh, I actually initially had this higher, but I had to rearrange after I found out that train to Busan came out last year. Or at I thought, least we're saying that it did. I Well, I looked it up and it said 2016. Yeah, but I looked deeper. And uh, if you look on the Wikipedia page, there's a tab for home video. And then it says oh, American home and that video was, release. Okay, yeah. Because I remember seeing it on iTunes and we watched it on... Oh, I think we rented it on iTunes. That but was then on it, Netflix when we watched it. I don't remember. We definitely watched it on Netflix. Okay, well, either way. So, um, yeah. So, anyway. Uh, Baby Driver. Um... I actually really liked this movie. It probably could be a little bit higher, but um, I don't know. You guys kind of already said it. It's fun. Uh, I think Edgar Wright continues to prove that he is a competent director, um, and I was thoroughly entertained throughout. Uh, I don't know if it's you know an award-winning movie. I don't think it's going to get like an Oscar or anything. But for like a fun uh, action, you know, comedy romp, uh, it was good, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed the soundtrack a lot. Yeah. Um, number eight is Get Out. So, I probably could have had this higher also, um, but it wasn't quite as memorable to me. Like, obviously, I realized that it's, you know, an important movie and it's really good, but it wasn't quite as memorable to me as these other movies, especially the top five. Um, It is good, though. I would watch it again. I think it's important, like you said, Jordan. I think this movie is definitely saying a lot uh, in a unique way. Uh, which is cool because I think more people will get woke from it because more people are exposed to it yeah. uh, because it's a you know like one other thing is I think massively it's, scale movie uh, at least like one people like me white people watch it it's a good like self reflection but like oh shit like actually people I know do shit like that all the time and, like, yeah yeah it's kind of fucked up like it's a piece to like look back like wow I could learn something from this you know yeah so. I think that's an important part of it, too. And like I said, saying it in a way where, you know, I think just about anyone who watches that movie can walk out feeling like they've not experienced or not, like, you know, lived the experiences of, uh, what's, is Daniel, is that his name in the movie? That's his real name. Oh, that's Dan, that's his real name. What's, I don't remember what his name in the movie is, but. Name. Craig. Sure. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go, so his name is Jason, so. Uh, I walked out of the oh, movie. Sort no, I don't know. Oh. I sort of walked out of the Damn, movie, Jason. almost knowing or like having an idea of how, like he would have felt in that situation. But obviously, there's no way that we can put ourselves in his shoes, really, and see how you know he would, he or other people would feel on a daily basis when they're treated that way. So it's interesting. Um, I would say I got a little woke from watching it. I woke up. I have nothing to say. <laughs> yeah, so that was good. Um, number seven is Your Name. So, again, uh, very good. Uh, I probably could have this higher. But, you said uh, that for every movie. Every movie can't be higher, Dan. You have to have a number one up there somewhere. I do. So, number five, is, number five is pretty set in stone. But uh, this could have... 
<laughs> That's such an arbitrary number to have set in stone. No, number like top five. Sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> the top five is number definitely seven. Set in stone. Will never these, make these, that. Other, these other ones. <laughs> Guaranteed seventh best movie. Yeah, number eight would never be higher than number four. Uh, <laughs> um, your name, yeah. I mean, you guys pretty much. We we all talked about this at length when it first released, but uh, great anime film. I think uh, this is a great movie to watch. Uh, Culture is an example. If you don't watch a lot of anime, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like you could go into this movie. Even if you all you know is Dragon Ball Z and you just hate anime, you can come into this. And enjoy it, and, and enjoy it for an animated film as well as a good love story, uh, and just a good movie in general. I think it transcends anime a little bit. Like it it's does. A good thing, like you said, it's like someone can watch and be like, okay, anime has its merits. Like you can yeah. make a fantastic story using this medium. Like sure, it's, it's doable. Like I said, yeah. If all you know is Naruto or like you know some kind of like Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Dragon Ball Z is like the best example. Like some kind of like you know bro action like Saturday morning cartoon anime. Um, I feel like watch your name and you'll walk out feeling a little bit different about anime as a medium. Yeah, you can see that it's like a movie just from like the few frames of like the trailer or something like that. Oh, you can yeah. see that it's on a higher bar than like oh, definitely. a TV I mean, show ever would be. It is a little unfair because they've had just, I don't know how long it takes to make uh, a movie like this, like with this art and animation, but uh, yeah, so much work has been put into this and it looks phenomenal. I would say visually it's one of the best looking uh, anime pieces I've seen. Mm-hmm. So really good is there, stuff. Is there any particular reason why it's lower on the list? Or it, there doesn't have to be. But. Um, uh, for me, just again, when I, when I looked back at, uh, 2017, the ones that I immediately, that immediately came to mind were my top five. Mm-hmm. So those okay. are the ones, those are the ones where I was like, Oh yeah, of course. Like that has to be on my, that has to be on my list. And then, so for that reason, I put it in my top mm-hmm. five and then I kind of rearranged those. Um, number six is John Wick chapter two. So again, I mean, it, I feel like you guys are probably surprised that this isn't higher because I just (laughs) scream the praises of John Wick from the the mountaintops whenever I, whenever I can. But I mean, John Wick should probably never be in anyone's like top three movies because it's not like, yeah, it's it's not groundbreaking cinema. Right. So John Wick chapter two, um, I've seen this movie a few times now. I watched it in theaters twice and then I watched it, uh, on, (laughs) This is the I watched it on a plane uh, with no sound, uh, and I was still entertained by it. And I was kind of like, you know, narrating it in my head. I was like, oh, this is like <laughs> the Baba Yaga. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, and like just when something crazy would happen, I was just kind of like, there was no sounds of gunshots or Tactical. punching noises, and I was just watching it and be like, oh, that was sick. <laughs> <You> <laughs> the Brent Rambo or whatever his name. Yeah, is. and then I look over. Um, yeah, this movie visual gag. Watch the video. If it's you not. See. It's not better than John Wick 1, um, yeah. but I don't think it ever could have been because uh, of the immense hype around it. But um, When he mouthed the words, do you want to give me a gun? Do you want to give me a gun? I was just reading that. And yeah. I was, yeah, I was narrating it in my head. And it, was, it was still great. Um, you, you even cringed when you didn't hear it. Like Even though there was no sound, you still cringed. I, on the, on the plane, silliness. I was like, <clears throat> okay, that delivery, oh though. God, no, dear Lord. Uh, yeah, there's something kind of just special about John Wick. It just feels like it is a little campy. It's a little cheesy. Like, it just feels like it should be a really bad movie. Like, even when I remember seeing the trailers for John Wick 1, I was like, that looks so stupid. Like, they killed his dog, and now it's Keanu Reeves. Like, it looks like, you know, it. when you see a trailer like that, it was the same thing, like, with Kingsman as an example. Just movies like that, you see it. You see, like, a stereotypical, like, leading white male with a gun and you're like wow i'm sure it'll be a movie that you know people will see i mean especially like keanu american reeves assassin yeah. or something like what like, about keanu when reeves? we see keanu reeves like he wasn't doing he wasn't in a great spot when john wick That's, came out everyone's like no i know oh, he's the dude from the matrix and he hasn't been in a great movie since like he's yeah. keanu reeves he's kind of a bad actor but then he somehow pulls off john wick in a way that's actually somehow charming yeah, like it, it, that's so it's like he it, that's why I'm saying it should be a bad movie because it has it has Keanu Reeves, it has little to no plot, uh, at least the first one, and, and this one goes a little more into like the the Hitman underworld and things like that. But yeah, it just it has all the makings of a movie that I should hate, um, but because of its pure action chops, uh, I love it. Yeah, I think the main thing about it is that it's such a well done movie. Take out Keanu Reeves, it's such a well done like action movie, and oh, all the yeah. set pieces are really good. And then the added like quirk of 
uh, Keanu Reeves in that role is what like makes it. It's great. Yeah. It, higher awareness. Yeah, like, it takes oh, okay, it to the cool. next level. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, the the first one obviously had so many great moments with like the nightclub scene and like the whole showdown at the end and even the opening house battle and everything. But then, I think my favorite John Wick scene you know, between the two movies is actually the conclusion of John Wick 2 where he's in the, uh, where he's in the Yayoi Kusama exhibit. I'm pretty, yeah, pretty <laughs> much. He's like in that, uh, infinity mirrors exhibit. Yeah. Uh, and it's great. There's, um, I mean like the, the way they filmed it was awesome and it was just, you know, you can say that they copied enter the dragon or, you know, a million other movies, I guess that have <clears throat> apparently done that, Gold but finger. sure. I don't know. I haven't seen that, but, uh, <laughs> Did they do that? Uh, Chuck E. Cheese, uh, Funhouse Room. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, so I just really love that. And there's like this, I think we talked about it when the, when we talked about the movie on the podcast. Um, he should have just went to the Washington State Fair and just had a fight in the mirror house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just in one room. They buy a dizzy pass and like. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's a deep oh, cut. This is a deep cut. cut. That's a real deep Washington. cut. Um, yeah, just there's there's some really interesting writing in there about like while they're in the uh, mirror exhibit, the Yayoi the mirror dimension, Kusama mirror exhibit, the mirror dimension, if you will. <laughs> uh, there's like a whole thing where as John Wick is going through there, the villain is saying like uh, he's like basically reflecting on John Wick's character and like there's just Boiling like all him down. there's yeah it's pretty much and there's all <laughs> kinds of like just interesting pieces of writing in there even though it should it sh- like I said the writing should be bad and it should just be a B movie but it's great so John Wick 2 great movie not quite top 5 because uh these other ones left more of an impression on me number 5 Thor Ragnarok um was this all at number 5 for us it was on 5 mine, for me mine is also 5 okay oh, wow. so wild I, I put it, uh, it's definitely in the top five. Um, I put it on the lower end of my top five. I love how, did we all, no, 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 Jordan had Get Out as his number one, but we both put Get Out lower than Thor Ragnarok, which is kind of offensive, but, because oh, yeah. Get Out was definitely more of a landmark, like, yeah. cinematic achievement, yeah, whereas sure. Thor Ragnarok was a systematically churned out, <laughs> just like, like <laughs> corporate, <laughs> corporate cor- machine. Corporate, yeah, corporate money maker. <laughs> yeah. Corporate money printer. But guess um, what? We're, uh, we're slack jaw. Guess so. what? I'm a, I'm a You're puppet. A puppet. <laughs> I'm a puppet. Um, there are Thor Ragnarok on you. There are uh, Thor Ragnarok, great movie. Um, I would say, of the movies I watched this year, I was probably most consistently entertained while watching Thor Ragnarok. Uh, I don't think it's the best film, obviously, because it's number five for me. But, um, you know, uh, perfect use of immigrant song at the end. That whole <laughs> that whole and the beginning. They used it twice. Did they? Yes. I don't think they did. Yes, they did. They did. Wasn't the opening like crawl yeah when he's that? not crawl, but no when they're when he's uh, fighting you know the huge big demon when he's spinning like oh, on yeah. the chain oh yeah and then he fights all those guys in there it's playing during that and then oh, it's okay. playing at the very end oh, okay so yeah I mean either way that was a mistake but maybe I didn't <laughs> better used I didn't remember that but but anyway 100%. so I I'm surprised that I even have this movie on my list at all because uh, I hate Thor. Um, most I, surprising movie of 2017. <clears throat> yeah. I don't, I haven't seen Thor one or two cause I just don't care, uh, which is saying a lot cause I try to see every Marvel movie, even Ant-Man, which I wasn't really even interested in at all, uh, which I ended up liking, but, um, I was not, I, I was not excited for this movie. Is that fudge? <laughs> <laughs> it is the fudge. Uh, I was not excited for this movie. Uh, I, I was excited about the idea of it because of, uh, them changing directors and all that kind of stuff before it came out. But, I could really care less about Thor uh, in any of the Avengers movies leading up to this point. Um, and then they basically did a complete 180 on his character, which is probably why I liked it, um, because he's allowed to talk like a normal human being and not be He became part of the just, actual MCU where everybody yeah. just cracks a joke every two seconds. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but I would say these these are some of the best jokes and some of the best writing, uh, comedic writing at least, and maybe just they writing They figured in out what's good about Thor and used it correctly. Yeah, and then also I feel like um, we might have talked about this one. We might have talked about a lot of this when we talked about these movies, but I feel like there was a lot of uh, improv in this movie. Possibly. I, I think even the director said that like 70% of it is improvised, which is crazy. Like the, all the stuff between him and Hulk and Mark Ruffalo, like that stuff just seems completely absurd. Like when, uh, what was it? Th- oh, when he was like, um, he's like, no, I'm pretty useful. Like outside of combat. He's like, are you though? Yeah. <laughs> he did that. That's like an in joke with us. Yeah. If, if you guys don't know, 
That was just great. So there's a lot of uh, just great comedy in there, but then also uh, great action and, like you guys said, great visuals. Um, like that whole sequence where they're talking about uh, is did, did they just call her Valkyrie, the girl that they yeah? yeah. So when they well, do like her, hmm? they called her like SB one nine. Oh, that's true. Her number, or whatever. But yeah, so Valkyrie, uh, when they're doing the history of the Valkyries and they do like that whole scene with uh, the Valkyries like fighting, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Hela and all that, um, it just looks like a like a oil painting yeah. painting come to life, uh, which is just incredible. Um, and then of course that final sequence where he finally does something cool as Thor. <laughs> he never. I'm gonna go on record and say that he never did anything cool as Thor before that moment. Hmm. Like it's not as the god Maybe of thunder. Not. Like, he did some cool the stuff with his with, hammer and all that with stuff. The but... original fight with Hulk in the Avengers 1 was kind of cool. Yeah, that was cool, but he didn't really do anything, like, godlike other than just being... Remember when he... Oh, not godlike, but when he smashed uh, Captain America's shield and yeah. made, like, yeah. a shockwave? That was pretty lit. That was cool, and there's also a scene in... Was that in Ultron? No. It was oh, okay. in the original Avengers. Oh, okay, because I think in Ultron Might there's a scene where, like, he too. throws his hammer at Cap's shield I remember nothing like... from Ultron, so... Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, there's... It just, I didn't care about Thor at all is the point. Um, and then the entire movie was surprising. Good writing, good visuals. Thor's character was good. Even Loki was actually good. I never liked Loki before. Uh, we won't get into that. And then I, I never liked Loki before this movie, so he was good. Um, good stuff. Roast number, him. Number four, <laughs> Train to Busan. Right. Um, so I Where don't, did you put it? Uh, I believe that was seven. Mm-hmm. So I wrong, but. I was actually when I was thinking of this is one of the movies that I thought wow that's definitely gonna be in my top five but then I looked it up uh, very quickly on Google and saw 2016 so then I thought I just assumed I was crazy and losing my mind and just assumed that it actually mm-hmm. came out in 2016 but if it did actually release in 2017 uh, this is my number four because <laughs> our list may have to be adjusted <laughs> I mean I just don't know it I, doesn't have to be set in stone like 2017 no like, I know we saw it in 2017 it was available to Americans generally yeah. like most people probably watched it in 2017 sure Why yeah not? that makes sense so uh, train to Busan um, this is yeah like you were saying Coulter it's a good emotional ride a uh, good emotional journey um, it I, the reason I liked it is because uh, it was smart. I thought it was a very smart movie. It did a lot of interesting things with zombies um, that a lot of people overlook or you know mm-hmm. neglect. Where you know I watched it recently, actually, like a couple weeks ago, um, and there's a lot of cool parts like where they're when they're first being attacked by the zombies on the train. Uh, like after everything pretty much hits the fan and they're like retreating backwards and they just lose like two trains or something, they slam the door and all the zombies are trying to get through. Mm-hmm. And then the main guy is like, wait, like they don't know how to work door handles. And they just like back up and the zombies can't open the door. And then one of the ladies like uh, throws water from a water bottle on the window and then puts up a newspaper so the zombies can't see them. So then they just don't care anymore. Um, that stuff was super cool. Uh, the parts where, like, they're... And this kind of reminded me of Snowpiercer a little bit, but where they're going through and the... Um, they're going through the tunnels, and the zombies go blind, and they can't see anything. Mm-hmm. And they're, like, trying to manipulate all that. That was super cool. And then also... Um, uh, like, the resourcefulness of the survivors was pretty realistic. Like, no one no one just became, like, an invincible hero out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It's like, even the toughest guy there, like, the the... Guy who starts out as an asshole, who's like the father yeah, of, the, of, gold. of the pregnant, yeah, pretty much of the pregnant lady. Um, he like starts out as an asshole or whatever, and he's like the buff, like you know, manly dude. But even he Spoilers. really only survives because uh, he gets like the duct tape, like arm guards that they make mm-hmm. and all that kind of crazy stuff. So it, I thought it was a really smart zombie movie. Um, and those are my favorite types of zombies: those fast moving, but also at times lumbering and slow, kind of like mindless people. Um, it made it exciting and I really enjoyed it. Last thing about that on the emotional front, you might start watching it and be like, wow, these guys are so dumb. Like this isn't emotionally satisfying whatsoever. But the best thing about it is that at the beginning you're like, okay, whatever. They're setting up these relationships. I've seen this before. This is rote, like old hat. Sure. Uh, I've seen all these stereotypes, blah, blah, blah. But who would have thought that by the end you would be absolutely terrified for one of these people to die and you'd be like, yeah. oh my god, like, I care if these people live or die yeah. right now. And yeah, because as it goes through, like, n- no spoilers, but as it goes through, even the daughter is like, no, you care as about as yourself and all this stuff. And, mm-hmm. like, the daughter is, like, kind of, like, the voice of the, um, she's, like, the stereotypical, like, 
character in this movie, like the stereotypical daughter, or like having a troubled relationship with her father. But then as it goes along, um, even she starts to realize that her dad is becoming a better person and blah, blah, Spoilers. Sort of. So, uh, yeah, it, it, I will say that when we started watching this, uh, we watched this all together, right? My, yeah. Did we? Yeah. So when, when we started watching this, I was thinking, oh man, like, like you said, it's, it seems very, you know, been there, done that. But by the end, um, I think most people would agree. It's one of the more unique, uh, heartwarming and uh, heartwarming. I don't know about that. I would say the end is the, the end is pretty heartwarming. Are we going to get into this? Yeah. Okay. Spoiler alert. Don't listen. If you don't want to know what happens. Um, so there's the real ending where they're walking down the, uh, pathway and they see them and they survive. Yeah. But then there's the ending before that where the girl is crying while the dad literally has to go outside and kill himself. Yeah. Uh, and she's like, dad, no. And yeah. But it was the and scene. And he has a vision of her as a baby and you're literally watching as he like, it was the he scene starts that... smiling while he's turning to into a zombie and then he falls off the fucking track and you're like, my life is in shambles. Yeah. That's heartwarming. <laughs> That's heartwarming to it's me. It's the I mean, saddest thing. No, it's demand. it's really sad, but like there is a there is like it's bittersweet because it's all obviously terrible. I guess it's not full misery porn where like it's not like the dad is being hacked to pieces. It's in front obviously of his terrible that, like that he's that he has to kill himself and that he's turning into a zombie and that like you know she's losing her father and all that kind of stuff. But then also he the reason he smiles is because he dies happy knowing that he salvaged his relationship with his daughter. Mm-hmm. like <laughs> only to have it immediately thrown <laughs> on the tracks literally i mean yeah but which is that's the that's the bitter part but the sweet part is that it's uh, a very bitter pill with it, a very it, small sweet one it is but uh, for me for me i was left like happy knowing that they had that, that arc like i i was i yeah. left like being like that's okay, like the, the you know the real coming of age of the story or the end of the story for him that's yeah why it's a satisfying story is that you have that resolution but it's also very sad yeah, and so yeah, it is. It is very dark and, and sad, but um, I felt it warmed my heart at least. I don't mm. know um, <laughs> to see that man. I have <laughs> right. I have basically no heart anyway. <laughs> so um, number three is Logan. Um, I don't really even like X Men that much, so I am also surprised that I put this on the list. Like you were saying, I am not invested in the X Men universe. I think I've gone on record by saying that uh, X Men. What is it? Days of Future Past is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Days um, of Future Past? I didn't even hate that one. I hated that movie so much. Uh, I hated most of the original. Don't you mean X-Men Wolverine Origins? Uh, that one was pretty bad, too. I liked the Wolverine. Didn't see it. The, uh, I forgot that movie existed, but it's not awful. The one in Hapan? Yeah. yeah that's a good one. Um, yeah, X-Men 1 through whatever, 3, I guess. Um Really cheesy. I don't like them. Uh, X Men First Class was pretty good because it was different. Uh, and then you know, of course, they did Days of Future Past, which I despised. Um, but the reason I like this is what you said, Jordan. It's very human. Uh, it's dark. It's gritty. Uh, it doesn't feel like any other Marvel. Or I guess we can technically call it a Marvel movie. It doesn't feel like any other Marvel movie. Um, it has real stakes. I think it's definitely more human than any other superhero movie. Maybe yeah. besides The Dark Knight or like Batman Begins or something like that. But um, if you just completely removed, uh, if you just completely removed it from the X Men franchise, if you completely removed it from Marvel or any like predisposition or you know anything that you have towards Wolverine or Marvel movies. I think you could appreciate it for the the story it tells uh, with with Logan and and it's interesting that they called it Logan because it is really about him. It's not yeah. really about Wolverine or any like comicy stuff, even though it kind of devolves into that towards the end. But um, yeah, it's it's an interesting character study. It it's sort of like a um, modern western in a way. Like there's a lot of just really cool elements of um, like the lone gunman kind of like making his final stand and all that stuff. Um, I think Hugh Jackman gives one of his best performances I've seen from him, especially as Wolverine. Uh, and then the action, if we're talking pure action, quite good. Yeah. Very violent. It's R it's rated R. So, you know, this guy who has, uh, you know, razor sharp claws growing out of his hands can actually do things with them. Uh, and it gets pretty wild. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a very mature movie. It's, it, it treats the viewer with respect and 
assumes that they aren't brain dead, uh, you know, moviegoers. So, Coulter, you didn't have this on your list. Yeah, no. Um, did yeah. you not? Did you? Like I think it? that there's more of X Men type stuff in there than you say there is. Like you say that if you take out all the X Men and everything, it's still like you still appreciate it for the story, which could be true. But there are parts of the story that they don't explain, like what is happening and you have to know about professor x you have to know about like that guy that's yeah. coming after him that looks exactly like him like who even is that and you know like plenty yeah. of other things about it so well no just but on a base level you wouldn't really understand if you didn't know some things about wolverine but well yes but what i mean is like if if all those things still happen but they had no connection to the universe and this let's say he didn't have uh, you know, his Wolverine claws or whatever, and he was just a guy who, like, had an experiment gone wrong or something sci-fi crazy like that, like, you could still appreciate him, <coughs> you know, like, basically being thrust into this situation where he has to care for, like, this, you know, daughter-like figure mm -hmm. to him and, like, yeah. uh, you know, having someone chase her down mostly... Uh, and having that whole mystery about, like, where she came from, like, why people are after her, all that kind of stuff. Like, there's a lot of elements where if you just, even if you didn't know that, you know, anything about even Professor X, you could definitely still get that whole, like, father-son relationship mm -hmm. that, that uh, father -son. Logan and father-son mm -hmm. uh, relationship that they have, so... Oh, wait, know. you're talking about Professor X and... Professor X okay. and Logan. I thought you were talking about uh, Wolverine and the daughter. Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, there's the father-daughter relationship, but then it's all... Like, the whole thing is just about relationships, really, between mm -hmm. people. And, like, there's a lot of really heartwarming and touching scenes and sad scenes between uh, Professor X and... Uh, or, I guess, Charles and Logan. Um, so, yeah, no, I really like that movie. Uh, I also think it's... I think it's pretty rewatchable. I've seen it twice. Um, it has really good pacing. Uh, it just—I felt really entertained and invested in the movie as it went along. So good stuff. Um, number two, can anyone guess? <laughs> no, uh, no. Which ones have we not said? Wait, let me let me check the list. It's not Blade Runner. I'll tell you that right now. You guys already guessed Blade Runner. That's number one. Uh, which one? Uh Jumanji. <laughs> Baby Driver. Did you already say that? Yeah, that was number Did. nine. Oh. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Dunkirk again. <laughs> again. You put Dunkirk on there twice. I did. Number two, Dunkirk. Uh, no, <laughs> number two was It. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I saw that, and I was like, Dane will probably put this on his list. I had It in my actually, head. Actually, no one has this on the list. I was list. like, you have to have It on there at some point, and then as you said, which one is it? I completely lost the train of thought. But Yeah, so... Um, this is the movie made for me, really. If if you were saying, uh, well, you said Blade Runner is, which is true, but for me, um, I, mean, I it is not a hipster film, and you're a hipster to some degree. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I so like I said before, I really like movies like The Goonies, uh, Stand the by Goon. Me. I really like Stranger Things. I don't like The Goon. I don't like that movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I really like those kind of. Uh, story is about you know a group of kids you know being thrust into an adventure or some kind of like crazy situation where you know against all odds the adults short won't round. do it so we have to do it oh wait yeah. i think i already brought this up you hate short, short round i don't i'm like gonna boil round. you down here yeah, you racist. hate it you like it because they're fighting against authority no that's every stranger that's every stranger things every goonies every child thing is because the adults can't they're not do it fighting, they're fighting against not authority they're not fighting. They can't trust the adults. They're they're not, they can't trust the adults. They're not things. explicitly they're the authority. <laughs> they're fighting. You got boiled down, son. You're they're boiled. not explicitly You're fighting against boiled authority. Right now. They're, They're, boiled boiled <laughs> They're not explicitly fighting against authority. That's right. Yeah, I don't expressly believe or uh, agree with that. I think they are fighting against like their own fears and stuff like that in the movie. Uh, to some degree, maybe they're fighting like authority, like their parents, and like there's the part with his mom or whatever yeah but no but that's that's a huge i don't stretch. i don't think that's it's, a it's about kids it's rejecting the help of others of adults that's not true they're not rejecting the help of adults they just know that the adults won't do anything and it's explained in in the story of it why that's true go ahead because pennywise the clown the story of it not because the movie pennywise it. the clown uh struck a deal with the town of Derry, and the adults are uh either in directly i don't know fully but they're oh either directly God. or indirectly uh, told to to basically ignore what's happening with wow, Pennywise. Wow, that's really dumb. All right, yeah. go ahead. And why so, this movie was number two? So anyway, so uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I just love that whole aspect of the kids um, being thrust into an adventure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this movie succeeded because uh, it wasn't necessarily very scary. I wasn't ever, you know... There were a few jump scares here and there that we'll probably get everyone, like where he jumps out the projector or whatever, mm-hmm. like that kind of crazy stuff. You're like, oh, whoa, that's crazy. But um, I cared more about just the fact that they were do that they were doing the things they were doing with it, and you know, when they were in peril, I felt, you know, more inclined to care about what was going to happen because they spend so much time dwelling on and exploring uh, the relationships that each of them have with their specific fear. So like with you know, each one has either a person or a thing or something that they're afraid of, or like a person in their life that like, you know, uh, personifies that fear or something like that. So as they explore that, um, you kind of get a feel for where each of them are coming from. And they seem more than just like, Oh, you know, snarky kid who always, you know, swears or like, Oh, uh, the nerdy, like awkward kid who, whatever, like they all kind of have, uh, like good character development and and uh, stakes in the story and for and for why they're even choosing to fight against this demonic clown with their friends because it all seems uh, somewhat real. Um, I thought it was at times, you know, I could see how there was probably a longer version of this movie and stuff got cut out of it and it, we got what we did. But for a mainstream major motion picture uh that you know broke tons of records and was pretty much universally considered to be pretty good uh it i didn't expect it to be as high on my list um or as good because i felt like it could have been lost in the shuffle of you know corporate mayhem needing to make money off a you know horror film especially like a stephen king property so it, it was surprising um and yeah, I don't know. It's something something about it is just like a. I like the the time period it's set in. Um, I just kind of love the whole like the vibe and the feel of it. So it was good. Fair. And my number one, which you guys both guessed was Calibre Blade Runner two. Blade Runner twenty forty nine. We'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> Blade Runner twenty forty nine is my is my number one movie of twenty seventeen. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what else to say about this. It, Other than the movie was made for you. I mean, essentially, it's <laughs> shot by Roger Deakins, so it's bound to be beautiful, and it is. Uh, I would say this is one <laughs> of the is. most visually appealing movies. I think I said this when we were talking about this before, but, you know, it's up there with Apocalypse Now, um, a lot of other, uh, like, classically shot and framed films. Uh, I would say this is this has to be up there. Even up there with the original Blade Runner, which was, you know, the OG crazy looking, you know, spectacle, like visual spectacle. Um, I would say this is the perfect version of Blade Runner for this time period. Like they, this is basically what everyone was visualizing or think they might remember when they watched Blade Runner for the first time in, you know, the eighties or the nineties. Um, it's one of those things where you have nostalgia and you're like, Oh, that movie looks so cool. You watch it now. It still looks good. But when you see this, it's kind of like the best possible version of like what you think in your head when you think Blade Runner. Um, and then, you know, the soundtrack on top of that and the, and all the performances for the most part, uh, just, I don't know, the whole movie just felt very tight and well produced and directed and just everything felt very sure of itself. Um, I, this is another one of those movies where I, I'm pretty sure there's an initial like four hour cut or something like that. And then they had to cut down a bunch of it. Um, so I'd be very curious to see, what this could have been, but I'm happy at what it is. Blade Runner 249, the director's cut coming soon. Do you think so? I think it could happen. Do you think they're going to do the director's cut, the final cut? No, no, like not going to Six different versions? Again, Probably not. They shouldn't. They I wouldn't, shouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if they do a director's cut. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. since they originally did the yeah. director's cut, people would be like, oh, we want a director's cut for this. Yeah. If, what, like, if there is like extra footage and stuff that they wanted to put in there and they didn't get to, then a director's cut is probably where they're going to do that. They might have even had a director's cut in mind before they even started. Yeah. Well, there is supposedly, I mean, I know they say that about a bunch of movies that come out, but uh, there is supposedly a very long version of this movie out there somewhere uh, that was, you know, initially pitched or something. And then they were like, well, I don't know who's going to sit through a four and a half hour Blade Runner movie. So, (laughs) So, 
interesting. I almost, uh, I'm curious to see if maybe they could have done like a part one, part two thing, which I usually hate, but if they had enough footage and it would have been for the better, um, that would have been cool. But yeah, it just everything for me, uh, felt so perfect. Like the, just every aspect of it, the acting, the visuals, the sound, um, the direction, uh, even the story for the most part, I really enjoyed. Um, I liked the whole aspect of like, whoa, androids had a kid does that mean they're more human than we thought like you know that like the whole questions it poses about um ai and uh technology and humans and all that kind of stuff is very interesting so uh even if just for the concept of the story alone i was very interested in throughout so love that movie um i also made a small list of movies i really want to see but haven't um because i'm assuming that one or a few of these would probably be on my list um, that is as follows. Lady Bird, uh, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, The Disaster Artist, The Shape of Water, Call Me By Your Name, All the Money in the World, Good Time, Wind River, and Kong Skull Island. I added that when you brought that up because I forgot that I wanted to see that. Um, have you guys heard of any of those movies? <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah, so I want to see a lot of those. Um, and then... The last category that I made only because Wait, it's... hold on real quick. I wanted to see Coco, but I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would have put that on here. I do want to see it, but not, like, rush out to the theater and see it kind of thing. Yeah, I'll That's say why it. I didn't see it. Yeah. I don't want to see it. We knew that. That's not my movie. You didn't have to say that. We knew that. Um, and then... Why is that? Oh, just because... I'm surprised that you guys right. didn't have this on your list, uh, but this is a category that I made specifically because I feel like it needs to be said. Um... The best movie of all time. The top film of all time that literally no other movie will ever <laughs> hope to hold a Cromwell candle to. Damn. Uh, Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge. So I just I, I feel like we can't go... When we're talking about best movies, mm-hmm. we, we can't we can't really let that conversation pass by without mentioning Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge yeah. because it really set a standard for if film. If you look for like lists of movies on Google, there's actually like a master key, like a a commandment that says every list will have a uh, calabar two at the top of it, but you don't have to state that. So it's like an invisible. It's known. It, it's, it's it's an one of those things. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those things where um, it's like, of course it is, right? Like it's just yeah. assumed that. Yeah. So there's there's no need to even write it. Right, and so I I felt like I shouldn't even really have to say you know make that as a separate mm-hmm. category or anything because he should have just assumed that even though. You know, technically one through ten, my movies were yeah, as followed. Even though that movie didn't release in that year, um, there's always that the, the top spot. But it doesn't you, have to be numbered; it's just the yeah, top. But spot. But if you do watch it this year, it's still the best movie of the year for sure. Like, well, every movie that you watch it, it'll be the best movie of the year yeah. because nothing compares. Yeah. Um. So Halloween Town Two: Calibers Revenge, <coughs> flawless. Just I, a flawless a motion, little, motion picture. I'm a little surprised that you didn't put Spider-Man: Homecoming on your list. I thought for sure you were gonna drop that one on there. Um. I initially had it on there. I took it off. Good. Uh, what did you bump out for Train to Busan? <clears throat> uh, Get Out. Savage. Wait. Get oh out? no. No. No no. It was. What did I bump out? No, I switched. I switched something. But um, if you added a movie, there's no way you could have switched. Yeah. Wait. What did I do? <laughs> Let's see. It would have to been already on there if you switched. It wasn't already on there. I think I deleted a movie. Yeah, Spider-Man: Homecoming. No. What did I? I'll delete? give you about ten seconds. I don't actually. <laughs> I don't actually know. Uh, it might have been. Guardians of the Galaxy. No, I didn't have that on there. Four, three. I don't know. Two, I don't remember. One. I'll probably <laughs> think right. about it. But whatever it was, it wasn't that great. So. Orient Express. It wasn't that great. No, I mean whatever it was, it was one of those movies that I probably put on there because I needed yeah. to get to top ten. Yeah. Um. I'm sure. I'm um. sure. Whatever I saw on there was fine. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, that was interesting that you guys both put Guardians. It's the last thing I could think of. Yeah. I so, honestly couldn't think of another movie better than Guardians to put at ten. So I uh, was really disappointed in Guardians. I mean, and so it's, was I. But. It's not a bad movie. Um, I would say it's actually you know a good movie. Um, but for the sole reason that I was disappointed in it. Yeah, that's why it's at number 10 for us. I mean, yeah. we I saw probably less than 20 movies, maybe 20 new movies this year. Yeah. So. yeah. 
I mean, the only other movies that could have even, like, been on that list for me are It and Dunkirk and Spider-Man Homecoming, and I didn't like any of those movies, so I wouldn't have put those on there. Yeah. And separated from the disappointment, Guardians is still a good movie. It it sad uh, yeah it is but it saddened me that i was so disappointed by it so i didn't put it on there fair enough and i like i do like spider-man but i don't think it compares notice that star wars is not on any of our lists absolutely not no it wouldn't be that's a statement if i could put yeah. one third of star wars on my list i would have put it on there but <laughs> if i could put the the lightsaber <laughs> sequence with yeah. uh, kylo and ray uh, fighting with each other is that the best sequence of the year <clears throat> yes you probably wouldn't yes really yeah wow yeah, I think I felt a lot of feels in the theater when that occurred. I would so. say that was... I felt like... I, I, I haven't felt that... Actually, I would say out of all these movies this year, I didn't feel the level of excitement and, like, you know, uh, your stomach going, like, oh, my God. Like, it's like you're on a roller happened? coaster. Pretty much, because I felt myself, like, welling up inside. I was like, oh, my God. Like, mm-hmm. we're going to see, like, some crazy lightsaber battles, and then yeah. it actually happened. No, whenever you are seeing a lightsaber battle for the first time, you're like, okay! Like, let's yeah. go, dude! Yeah, I mean, I was i was like physically excited like i got wet i would give my left (laughs) nut to see darth maul versus obi-wan versus qui-gon again for the first time i'm qui-gon when you hear a lightsaber turn on you get turned on it's just that simple that's right there's There's a lot of times where they just turn it on like for no reason no but but even no 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 there's always a reason and it always turns me on (laughs) um yeah i mean like i said i would pay ten dollars just to watch that kylo ren ray sequence i mean i basically did i barely (laughs) there's basically nothing left of that it is sad that it's not on our list on any of our lists it is what it is that's upsetting culture especially for you because you're the biggest star wars fan here at this table maybe on the planet absolutely not that's not true (laughs) that's not true (laughs) not even on the top one million possibly yeah maybe not no 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 you probably probably yeah i mean you went to star wars celebration yeah europe all right yeah all right so yeah so here's the question do we take a break to reset the camera or do we just steamroll through because it is a little bit of trouble for us to do a break uh i I think we just steamroll we might as well it's we're already at about an hour 45 so oh jesus all right well set it up boy wacky film all right so every wednesday uh every every time we record uh we'll say we Pick a random movie out of a bag of movies. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, uh, it could be anything from, you know, a critically acclaimed movie such as Hollow- Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge, to, you know, a lesser known indie film like Citizen Kane. Um, it could be really anything. Uh, it could be good, it could be bad. <laughs> One of us may have seen it, or some of us, or none of us. Um, but uh, it's something that is fun to do, and it is always surprising. So we do this every week, and you can listen to what we pick. You can you have around a week or more to watch it, and then you can come back and join the conversation. And I will say there are still quite a few Disney Channel original movies on the list that we haven't watched yet. That's true. I think there's three out of four still on the list. Yeah. yeah uh, so Syrian film is Syrian film. Serbian still film. in Serbian, Serbian sorry, film. Serbian film. Thank sorry. you guys. Uh, <laughs> I had a stroke. You did. So um, yeah, so we do this every week, and it's always exciting for you know one reason or another. Uh, and this week we watched Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragoon, uh, That's which is the name. that is the name Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It's an Ang Lee joint, uh, <laughs> similar to a Spike Lee joint, but not. But uh, slightly different. But slightly different, and it has more of flying. A lot more. Uh, they're not every Ang Lee gliding, film has a flying or gli- gliding. They're jumping. They're jumping f- for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a <laughs> jump is still a jump. <laughs> so Superman, fly- Superman jumps around the planet all the time. Listen, I mean, did they ever he just- used to actually <coughs> jump? Or Superman originally couldn't fly. He could only jump. That's true. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know that. And I don't care. They eventually uh, <laughs> have to come back down. They can't keep flying forever. That's true. Oh, wait, so, I think in Man of Steel, he can't fly. He can only jump. Wait. He learns mm, to fly. He but, learns to oh, fly. Okay, right. Yeah. That movie's so, trash. All right. Yeah, I don't know why is. you brought that up. Now Except for the uh, Superman versus Feyora fight. Um, so we watched Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Uh, I feel like this is one of those movies where, you know, everyone has heard of it. Yeah. Right? Uh, like it's I a, guess. It's a, it's a pretty, like, that's a big if name. you know like, about, you know, if there's... A list of Chinese movies. This is definitely one of the most well-known Chinese yeah. movies. Oh yeah, but I mean, in Possibly general, like one. when you when it's one of those things where it's just uh, embedded in our culture. Like when you see some crazy like kung fu stuff, you're like, oh, is it like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, like that kind of thing? It's just like a like a 
you know, you say it without even thinking. It's like it's like yeah. Kleenex or like I guess as far as modern movies go, but like Enter the Dragon and like Bruce Lee. Oh well, like yeah, that. of it's course, obviously the yeah, groundwork definitely. But uh, yeah, I don't know. This, this is just one of those movies where you know people. It's like, of course, yeah, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That's a great movie. Um, none of us had seen it. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, it did. Uh, it did. Um, <laughs> I have to call it out every time. It you did. Win some Oscars. I'm gonna look that up in a second. But um, yeah, this is, I feel like this is a oddly critically acclaimed movie because this doesn't seem like the kind of thing that critics would necessarily usually go for. Because it's kind of like a it, I mean, it's it has more to it than the action. But it's this is definitely a, a different style of movie than than yeah. us Americans are trained to enjoy and watch. I'm not well versed in kung fu movies or you know martial arts movies. I'm not um, really either. I've seen almost none. Uh, so I'd be very interested to know what aspects of this are original and what are just completely, like, tropes already. Mm-hmm. I feel like the flying around is probably the main, like... That's the wire, the wire stuff thing. is... Ha- had been done before. Like, that's a mainstay of a lot of, like, Hong Kong-based films and Chinese films, like, martial arts films. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think one might say it was done, like, very well yeah. in this movie, even though it's, like, that whole aspect of it is pretty goofy. At times, I would say most people would probably agree that this is, like, where they, you know, maybe perfected it or something, because it looks good considering what they're doing, I would say. What do you guys think of it? I thought it was great. Like, the beginning is kind of a little slower, like, not quite sure what to get, but I did, like, I like the characters in this movie. I thought at the start they kind of do a good job of at least making them seem kind of personable to each other. Like, you have uh, Michelle... uh, use character uh I've, her name's like shulin i believe or shuli shulian yeah. Shu- shulian you you shulian, shulian i just and, thought uh, of uh i have imdb pulled up actually so we can refer to the characters because right. i forget some of their names to be honest you're racist so um <laughs> it's your thing this episode <laughs> uh no i was just saying that i mm-hmm. i named her shulian because that's yeah basically but how you say it in I, american sure so. i think her character is really cool but just immediately when the first actual action sequence happens, like, I was, like, I don't know about you guys, but I, like, was, like, this is, like, an incredible piece of just, like, choreography happening right oh, now. Like, yeah. it's amazing to see them, like, doing, like, the fighting moves. And even when, like, they do the goofy jumps, like, it's, like, silly at some points, but, like, it's, uh, there were times where, like, they're, like, running across the walls and, like, it's just, like, wow, like, they're doing that on wires, but also they're still coming back down in one sequence and continuing to, like, move and, like, not oh, just yeah. kick each other in the face. Which, like, yeah. Like, it's pretty incredible, and a lot of those fights are like that, like, all throughout, and I don't know, I even, like, I like the story in it, too. Like, it's not groundbreaking, but it's emotional at, like, and tries to be, at least, and I think it does a pretty good job. Uh, I don't know if like, I think the emotional part between Shulian and, uh, what's the other guy's name? Lubo? Lu- um, you're close. Ten. Lu- uh, nine. Eight. Seven. He's six, not out here. Five. Four. Li- Li- Mu- three. No. Li Mu Bai? Two. Yeah, Li Mu Bai is his name. Uh, those I hate two that. characters. I hate you. Their relationship is interesting. I don't know about the younger girl's relationship with, like, that desert warrior Gen guy you that kind of seemed like thrown in at the end a little bit but it, that, that was, was like a subplot and as as like the <laughs> final fight kind of was happening i was like <coughs> the, the dude is nowhere yeah what that guy was like in a subplot in a flashback and now he's gone the pretty extended was, flashback yeah it was very long yeah and I, d- I did think that part was a little out of place but like i actually connected with that because it was like a classic love story situation except is. for that he uh it himself. was not yeah he forced himself on her first of all and secondly she was violent towards him yeah. up until that very moment <laughs> their relationship is and then she was just down it's toxic yeah it was a but, it was a bad rela- yeah it was toxic anyways, but after that point it was a classic yeah. romance yeah too. even that part like you can still connect it's like okay like it's a classic love story th- not thing but like you it's relatable even going past the language barrier because uh, the movie is entirely in uh let me just clarify. You're not saying which. rape is relatable, right? N- I'm not saying that. Okay. No. Uh, but <laughs> companionship <laughs> is. God right. damn it. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I just, 
I Everyone think was movie, questioning that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Someone well, had I, I brought up the whole forcing himself on her, and then you're like, everybody can relate to this. I was like, wait, hold on. I mean, Everyone in Hollywood can. <laughs> like, it's not like... Bazinga. <laughs> it's not like just a strip rape scene. Like, there yeah, is... Yeah, no, yeah. No, because uh, she's down. Yeah, it's not. It's, wait, that's a complete... But he has no clearance for takeoff. Yeah. That's it's, true. He's and, in muddy water at the, at the start right there. That's true, yeah. He has no clearance for takeoff, but he stuck the land. Yeah. So, but yeah, but <laughs> you really want <laughs> you really want well for it with those. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of you. Proud of your champ. Quite good. Mm-hmm. I agree. I didn't think it was that great. Really? Um, I don't know. I. That's all so, that needs to be said, yeah. guys. Th- Thanks, no. guys. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> no, but as far as the uh, floating around, um, I feel like that would be, and with the choreography and stuff, it is laughable. The, uh, no, it's just I'm thinking about your commentary. Yeah, on no, yeah, I was just, I was. <laughs> you were just roasting it. I can't take that seriously. Um, just because it doesn't look like they're actually jumping, it looks like there's a wire on them, and it looks like they're being pulled around. It doesn't yeah. look like they're jumping. So, uh, that would be great if it was a Cirque du Soleil show, and like the, <laughs> if it's a live. I feel like my point is. This would work really, really well as a live performance, and like their choreography and everything yeah. is awesome. As a movie, you have the opportunity to make it look as real as possible, and they just didn't do that. Like they're like, okay, let's make it look like. But I think it's because yeah. they're trying know, to the stay true time. to that. Yeah, to that. It is uh, a dis- like that's a decision to make it look like that. For oh sure. yeah, and that's. I, I agree with you. Like it does look goofy. I don't know if you guys remember. Like when I was talking about Sword of Destiny, which is the Netflix sequel, I was like, when you watch it, it looks like you're watching a play. Like that's that's how I feel when I'm watching those fight scenes. It's like. Mm-hmm. Like, because they're, like, amazingly done. Especially that first one. That first one is, like, incredible to yeah. see. Like, yeah. And it, all the other ones later, too, are just, like, fantastic to watch. But it it is... There's a level of just, like, separation where you're like, okay, I'm watching this now for, like, the acrobatics and, like, the craziness that's happening. It is a little goofy, although, I don't know. I, I'm kind of able to understand it because to just know it's like okay they're gonna do this as a decision and i'll just roll with it because you know that's just how they did it so yeah i think they're like very intimately aware with yeah with that and and i also think that's a not a trope but it's like a they have their own it's a standby it's a style of it's yeah it's like a a stylistic decision for these kind of movies Mm -hmm. initially probably because of uh you know they probably couldn't do much else in terms of like having people fly around the screen or like do any sort of crazy stunt work. But um, I think they stuck with it mostly for like preserving that, that aspect of the filmmaking. I do think there's like a benefit to doing it as well. Cause if they don't have that stuff, I'm like sure you could find a way to make it look like they're actually running across the wall. But like at that point with the wire, like they're just actually doing it. And like mm-hmm. to be able to move from one scene to another and just keep them like a real person doing that, like it shows from a movie from 2000, like, there's hardly any CGI besides, like, some backdrop stuff for, like, when they're in the desert and some other, like, visual stuff. But, like, for the most part, it's all just of the real. fighting. All of the fighting yeah. is 100%. There's, real. like, a the scene, like, the tavern. They are like, killing each other. There's, like, That's true. 100 people in that tavern all doing one choreographed act. And, like, it's just, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the main thing that's exciting about, you know, any martial yeah. arts movie is that it's all real. It's all choreographed. And it's... Uh, more than any like American film yeah. has mostly ever done. So, yeah, it's exciting to watch that. But I also feel like uh, I I don't know because I haven't watched that many martial arts movies. But I feel like there's not much new about this movie necessarily. I yeah I'm maybe I, not. But I feel like it's like the perfect. It's like boiled down into like its essence. Like it's like the perfect little like you know love child of all of that stuff like, mm-hmm. into one thing yeah i don't really know though yeah. like, I, I haven't seen enough to say i didn't necessarily dislike the movie at all and uh i definitely had a lot of fun watching it and like mm-hmm. making comments and stuff <laughs> sure as we, we, we know <laughs> yeah uh no but yeah i feel like i've gained more satisfaction from other things um but yeah not a bad movie in my um, opinion i really enjoyed it um I I was excited to watch this mostly because of the action, uh, because I had heard, I had heard tell of uh, some of the scenes. Specifically, the one that I had heard mentioned a lot was the final one, 
between uh, not on the trees, but where they're in the dojo, mm-hmm. and she's picking up all the all the weapons. Um, I had heard and seen on multiple like you know top top five like fight scenes in movies or like you know top ten you know choreographed sequences or whatever like uh, you always hear about that scene, and I've heard countless people say that it's just like an incredible sequence, and it is. Um, I would say every action sequence in this movie is something to behold. Uh, when I was watching it, I felt stunned that yeah. they were able to get, you know, five people to do what they did, let alone, you know, in that, especially in that tavern scene, like 50 people, maybe like, I don't know how many people are in there, but so many are in that little tavern and the set, like, again, like some of it, it is from 2000. So some of it, I guess you could say is a little like stilted at places but like you know people are flying over balconies the balconies are like exploding it's actual like real sets that they designed um they're in real locations the the music is great yo-yo ma is just coming in with his epic music like the whole just everything in the movie for me was great um the music was really good i think the cinematography in particular was probably my favorite part about the movie it looked consistently beautiful with the landscapes but then, uh, like, the landscapes, the city shots, there's a lot of cool, um, they dwell on people's, like, expressions, and they're acting yeah. a lot throughout the movie, even though, like, you think that would get lost in the shuffle with everything else that's happening. But then, even with the action sequences, um, it's so refreshing to watch a movie, especially one from 2000, that's filmed so competently with action, like... All of it is in camera. There's there's hardly any shaky cam. There's no like. There's not a lot of even quick cuts or any sort of like camera tricks. It's just when you see someone like you said running up the wall, and then jumping off the wall and in one continuous you know sequence, go back into fighting with the sword or like with the staff or jumping over someone yeah. or something like that. You're watching it and you're like, okay, they literally just did all of that in like a 10 second span. It's not like they did multiple cuts of them getting like, oh, you need to get the perfect jump off that wall and you need to get the perfect, like, you know, kick to that guy's face. It's just, oh, yeah, this person just did this crazy stunt and you get to see the camera just very calmly just follow it and you see everything happen. Um, And that's just... That itself is to be applauded because the amount of effort that went into that on just the stuntman's part... And if the if the actual actors did that even better, I don't know if the actual actors did all their stunts, but um, just in general, the amount of work that went into them doing that, but then also getting such excellent shots of it and views yeah. is just it's very refreshing and impressive. Um, yeah, I don't know. They just I was pretty. The only part of the movie that kind of dragged for me was the flashback sequence because. I think it went on a little too long, and yeah. I also don't know... I don't really think it added too much to the movie. Like, it sort of added more to her character and, and her arc, but... And, and I guess his, sort of, even though they didn't really bring him back for too long, but um, I I just was kind of left wondering why that happened and where they were going with yeah, that. Yeah, there's sequence. not a lot of It's not bad. That, but. No, but it does feel, like, dragged out, and I do think part of it is to, like, make the decision for... Uh, I think they... The subtitle called her Jen. I'm not sure. If yeah, that's what Jen referred Yu, to that. What they call her. But like her, her like problem was that she was going to get married. She was going to be like a uh, arranged marriage to some guy yeah. that they didn't want to. And so I think that's just adding to like that tension. But it just doesn't really. It doesn't need to be there. Like she obviously didn't want to be married anyways. They don't need to have an other love interest that doesn't really like add that much. It, it like I said, yeah, it like, added a little more to her character. But I just don't know if that was worth yeah. the amount of time. Yeah, that it could put. have been something different for sure. Yeah. So good, good, excellent movie. I would say that's the only part for me that kind of was a little bit of a setback. Um, I did want to mention really quickly. This was, uh, nominated for five Oscars. Actually, sorry. Jesus. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, it was nominated for pretty much every Oscar you can, <laughs> it was nominated uh, for 500 Oscars. It was nominated for, uh, best cinematography, which it won. Best music, original score, which it won. Uh, best art direction, and set decoration, which it won. And best foreign language film, which it also won. Um, it was also nominated for best picture, best director, best writing, screenplay, uh, best costume design, film editing, and best original song. 
So this kind of just like swept up the Oscars yeah. in a sense. Um, I definitely agree with best cinematography. I would say the cinematography, like I said, is my favorite part because it was pretty stunning. I'd say. Your cinematography boy. I am. That's my thing. What do you think, Coulter? You kind of gave your thoughts, sort yeah. of. Yeah, I don't really have too much more to say about it, especially okay. since we're kind of out of time. But that's true. Okay. Give it a quick review. Yeah. Quick um, score. I'm gonna give this uh, a nine out of ten. I'm gonna give it an A. Uh, and say that you should definitely watch it um, if you appreciate competent filmmaking. Uh, if you like, <laughs> if you just enjoy uh, seeing stuntmen do crazy stuff uh, and you know it's real. Uh, real. Their stunts made real. Uh, I think you'll really appreciate this movie. If you want to, uh, you know, expose yourself to a different type of cinema and step out of your American comfort zone, uh, unless you're listening to it outside of the States, sorry. Um... I would say definitely watch this movie. Uh, if you, yeah, I don't know. If you're just looking for a good action movie with heart, this is also a really good movie to watch. Overall, loved this movie. Great. Um, yeah, uh, watch the movie if you want to watch a martial arts film. I, I don't. I honestly don't really know. If you're looking for like a super good story, I think you can look to other martial arts movies. I don't know. Um, it wasn't even necessarily bad. It's just nothing crazy different than anything else. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess I recommend it, but not super highly. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't like or I didn't dislike it, but Fair yeah, enough. nothing special to say about it. I'm indifferent. All right, I will also give this movie a nine out of ten because I don't have time to create up a, uh, a stupid <laughs> uh, scale for it. a joke. <laughs> Nine weapons that's, out of ten. That's a high... Yeah. Nine, <laughs> nine uh, shuriken thrown nine out. Nine broken weapons out of ten. And the tenth <laughs> one is the Green Destiny. Nice. The Green Fair Destiny. Enough. Nine out of Green Destiny. Okay. You are a big fan of it. I think it's great. I honestly am a sucker for the wire action. I actually like it a lot. Cause it's the wire action is cool. I didn't really mention that. but stylistic choice, but I think it adds something unique. And it's just fun to watch. I can definitely see how it could come off as a little goofy, um, especially if you're not used to that. Which, I mean, to be honest, I wasn't really used to it before I've seen this. But um, it's there's something kind of... I don't know. It feels a little classic. I feel like a little like classic filmmaking technique that they can definitely replace with CGI. But uh, I appreciate the in-camera stunts yeah. and uh, real work that they put into that, which is cool. Guys, this We're skipping directly over games. Th- we, we don't, don't have, have time. time. <laughs> we don't have time. Yeah, we don't have time. Have uh, there's not a lot to say with games. I mean, I don't think. You sure? You came back to a classic. That's true. There's there's not much to say. You're not going to say. I mean, you already said that. you already said that you didn't want to hear me talk. Yeah, about no, that, I so. don't. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll talk about that next podcast. I'll, I'll probably give myself a half an hour for that one next time. <laughs> Um, guys, it's that time of you the week where here. we would normally talk about video games, but this was a jam-packed uh, movie episode, so we're going to skip that, uh, and we're going to go right to We're not really the- playing anything special. So. Yeah, I mean, it's just been the typical stuff. We want a pretty awesome- If we play awesome- any new big releases, we'll let you know. That's true. We want there a pretty awesome any. chicken dinner. Um, oh, yeah. Night. Was it we last great- night or the night before? Uh, last night. Mm-hmm. I think it was actually last night. Might have been last night. Uh, that Might was a, been. that was a pretty epic chicken dinner. It was all four of us. Really quick synopsis. It was a, a, a squad match. It was four of us, mm-hmm. uh, and we won. we won, and we were and all we and we time. were all alive yeah. at the end, mm-hmm. uh, and we all had like three to five at kills. Least three, yeah. That's we it's went in. Up. We we killed a lot of people that match. Yeah, I have the replay of that, and I was thinking like, is there any way we can upload that because we don't have like the commentary for it, but. Mm. I was thinking, what if we did a commentary for that? That'd be fun. Like you we, have the entire match. Yeah, because the replays, you can save the replays, and you can watch it from different people's perspectives and stuff. Of the entire game. Yeah. I oh wow, so. I didn't know that. It should be saved. It's on a new your, thing. It's, they're all saved on. Uh, the last twenty matches you played yeah. are automatically saved. Wait, really? In your replays. Yeah. What? I didn't know that. So it should all be on there. That's and crazy. And you can create like cinematic like cutscenes and stuff. That's insane. I saved the like the final moments. It only because Nvidia automatically saved it for me. But the the final moments where I ran up the hill and uh, made Custer's last stand and mm-hmm. killed those people. Um, yeah. So that was a really that was actually a great match. All it around, it's a really good match. Yep. Um, but we'll talk more about video games next week. For now, we have to pull the wacky film. You have to. 
I have to pull in. So I guess we've decided now that the host is pulling mm-hmm. the wacky film. Okay, that makes sense. So, like I said before, uh, every week we pull out a random movie. Uh, the host, rather, pulls out a random movie from this bag here. Um, there's quite a few movies left, and it could really be anything. Um, but the whole point is that it's something that one or all of us haven't seen. Um, so it's just a it's a fun way to expand our cinematic horizons. Um, basically, we'll pull it out, and then you'll have around a week or more to watch it and uh, engage in the discussion. So can you not look in the bag while you pull it? <laughs> Sorry. They were all shrouded from mess. view. I didn't see any movies. I will produce a real version of the song someday. <laughs> will you actually? I Maybe want you someday. To. Maybe one day when you don't run from what you come I could from. actually I could actually easily just like throw something really easy you together. Could. It doesn't have to be great. It doesn't even have to be good. It doesn't have to win a Grammy. It does. It should. It will. It needs to. It will. Your Grammy made real. My Grammy made physical. All right. We need. I was also thinking when we were saying like inside movie. jokes that uh, it would be kind of funny if there was like footnotes where you could click on the footnote and then it would take you to an explanation of that inside joke. That'd be good. Where we have like we have a lot of inside videos, jokes. So yeah. Let's add that to the disclosure like pop up menu as well. Mm-hmm. I have a movie in my hand. What is it? No! Wow! <laughs> It's a Serbian film. Oh, well, it was going to happen sometime. Oh my gosh, guys. We've been waiting for this for so this long. Is, this is really bad. This movie. This is a, so bad. An alleged snuff film. <laughs> or it's... Oh my god. I, we don't know, but... <laughs> I mean, it was... They, rem- they investigated well, yeah. it as a snuff film yeah. just because they watched Rumor. it and they were like, no, this is too much. It's a bit of like this a is... uh, like neighborhood like tall tale. It's like, whoa, this movie's like the like they actually kill people. A movie like Cannibal Holocaust. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah, things like that. It's like a shock film, like yeah. Two Girls One Cup, <laughs> except it's a whole movie. A Serbian film, 2010. An aging porn star agrees to participate in an art film in order to make a clean break from the business. That only never sounds only to discover that he has been drafted into making a pedophilia and necrophilia themed oh, snuff no. film. I didn't. I, know that was kind of yeah. That was kind of a spoiler. Damn it. It's not. It's, it's, uh... It, it is, but... It's not. Well, Jordan didn't know that, so now he knows it, and it's a spoiler. Okay. Do we... That's fine. <laughs> do we know of a way to get this movie? It's not... <laughs> no, no. It's on, it is on Amazon. Oh, it is? I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. Okay. <sighs> it... Uh, can we make on sure... YouTube. <laughs> can we make sure to log out of my account before we buy that movie, because I don't want that on my I mean, record. It <laughs> it's not gonna do anything. They're gonna um, come after me. Um, yeah, so this, this is one of those movies that, I think this you is actually... You might not want to watch this movie. Yeah, that's true. This is one of the movies that we put on. Uh, As this a is, joke. Uh, yes, but it's also one of the first ones that we put on when we were thinking of what to watch. there was watch. ever a reason for uh, Not Safe for Work tag, this is the reason to slap it on next episode, because this... Yeah, I feel like next episode is going to be a little wild, because this... Gonna... You guys are going to need to watch next episode of the podcast, because it's going to be wild yeah it's gonna be a wild one i uh i feel like this is one of those movies where um i i don't really want to watch it i (laughs) I feel like i'm gonna be really disturbed we'll Um, see if we get through it yeah it's it's gonna be uh it's gonna be something yeah so we're gonna have to like make fun of it because there's no joy to be had yeah I we we need we, we need to make light of what's happening. Bring because, your A game, uh, boys, because we're gonna yeah. Need it. This right. this is gonna be scary. All right. Well, next week. Um, you know, you have a week to decide if you want to watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> choose choose <laughs> which you, wisely. Which you probably won't. Um, until then, my name has been Daniel Point, uh, Coulter Potter, and Jordan Miller. We are the Not So Subtle Boyos. Um, if you want to hear more about us, if you want to know more about us, you can uh, go to our Twitter uh, at It's Not So Subtle. Um, you can go to our website at uh, It's Not So Subtle dot com. Oh, we uh, haven't been shouting that out in a while. Yeah, so you can go to the website. Um, it has the wacky film list on there. So if you're curious about what other movies to look forward to it, besides a Serbian film, um, they're all on there. It's also uh, a pinned tweet on our tweets page on our Twitters. Um, <laughs> you can follow our. Uh, Pubga exploits if we ever stream again, which we probably will soon, or whatever game. There's no on, reason not uh, to. Yeah, there's no reason not to. It's always epic. Uh, at it's not so subtle on Twitch. Uh, if you want to engage in the discussion and tell us why we shouldn't watch a Serbian film or commiserate with us, 
uh, or other things, you can email us uh, or send us a quick message at it's not so subtle at gmail.com. Um, and then if you are curious about anything uh, with me personally, uh, you can go to at Lane on Twitter, at Lane DePoint on Twitch, at Lane DePoint on Instagram, uh, and of course on Pornhub. Uh, that's all I got. Coulter. You can follow me at Coulter Broder on Twitter and Instagram. How Concise. Do you, how do you Short and sweet. <laughs> Yeah, I, my username I feel like doesn't I, have look, anything. We need to put this out on the table. You guys, I feel like you're bullying me a lot. I feel like I'm getting bullied by what? you guys today. I, w- that was directed towards. I wasn't Jordan even talking to you. And me. Dane, shut up. There is nothing about you. Why is everything about you? I, I just feel like you, I, I don't know. I just feel like a lot of hostility. <laughs> That's all. God. Jordan, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me, up, okay. Jordan Miller at the Killamilla on Twitch, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and other video game things. And if you want to follow my anime bo- bo- blog on Tumblr, my you can follow me bo- at uh, Tenzo Dash Taicho. How do you spell that? I don't. <laughs> you don't get the right to make that joke. Oh, oh no. you thought we were insulting you because you were the one that usually asks, "How do you spell that?" Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I was just saying that because you guys make fun of me, and I felt yeah. like striking. No, and I also feel like you guys are bullying me a lot. But okay. uh, yeah, get, get out. Okay. Do you want to take us? Out? Time's running short. No. Okay. Can it. someone do it? I'm not doing it. I already did. Every- I'm I already said. I already, I already said everything. I don't want to be here next week. I'm Friday. I'm actually. I. I am actually kind of dreading watching this. <laughs> <laughs> I never. I never thought this day would come. Yeah. I never thought we'd pull this. I didn't know it would come so soon. That's true. I wasn't prepared for it. it wasn't fate comes swift. That's true. I wasn't. Uh, things swift. happen fast. <laughs> Um, if you don't, if you don't stop to look around every once in a while, this, it'll like move fast or something. Wow. All right. <laughs> Words of wisdom. <laughs> Let's end it off. I think Ferris, uh, Bullion said that or something. All right, please. Ferris Bullion's day off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, guys, this has been another <laughs> wild episode of Not So Subtle. Uh, it certainly won't hold a candle to next week because we'll be watching, um, you know, a, Actually, we'll a probably, deplorable film. We'll probably just be crying the whole episode. Yeah. I mean, we're going to need to... We'll be a changed man. Yeah. Guys, send send uh, good good prayer, pr- prayer prayers a prayer and thoughts. Send one prayer for one like. Send one please. prayer. W- one like one like on this uh, podcast equals one prayer for I think we've watch. already gone too long, so... Yeah. Probably. All right. See you guys. Thanks for listening. Bye.